Test one, two. I think we're good. Let's make sure the audio is off down here. And we have made sure. And uh, this was uh, not easy to, to do. Unfortunately, I have had uh, a bit of issues with uh, some leaks back in the back uh, where I have to uh, completely remove some drywall and some paneling and it's just a mess. So with that said though, I thought, well, it's been a while since we, we, we missed our Tuesday, and it's uh, Saturday, I think. So I'm like, might as well uh, have a little fun at least on a Saturday. It's uh, extremely, extremely hot outside, which is uh, a bit rough. And uh, But we're making do here in Maryland, and I uh, was able to uh, operate from the uh, car today with my radio and talk to bunch of people all over the uh, place so uh it's been a, it's been a, at least a somewhat um what's the word for it um productive so so mind the mess back here i've kind of tilted the camera at an angle this way so it's not as uh, noticeable hopefully i was going to start and try to do the show over on that side um the problem though was is that um Unfortunately, with the phone, I've, they've made changes. YouTube's made changes where um, you can't just start a live stream anymore via the phone. I'm not sure why that is, uh, what's going on. I know they are getting rid of the uh, Google Hangouts on August the 1st. I have yet to try the webcam link. I hope to God that works without anything. The weird thing about the new... Um, the new uh, Google Hangouts on the phone is that they said that I don't meet some sort of criteria. I'm not sure what they've changed as far as if it needs, you know, if you need more numbers, if you, if you have to have a certain uh, level of uh, audience or what it is they've changed recently. I'm really getting sick of YouTube changing the rules. It seems like every time I get close to one of the thresholds, they raise the bar again. They keep raising the bar. It seems like every six months to a year. And when I finally get to that plateau of meeting that criteria, it changes again. So uh, if they've changed the rules where you can't do streaming without, you know, certain criteria. This might be the last live show. I don't know. Hopefully not. Um, we'll see what happens, but we're just going to enjoy a couple of drams and hopefully some people stop by. If not, we've tried kind of thing. Um, so let's just get into it. I've been uh, going through some Scotch Malt Whiskey Society bottles and, um, having some fun there and also was sent uh, by Mr. Project uh, Codename Alpha, we'll call him, uh, <laughs> a really nice sample of something that I, I wouldn't seek out normally for myself because of uh, I'm going to stick to SMWS's um, regular distillery offerings. I'm, I'm, you know, pretty straightforward with that. But he did me send me a, a blend, and I, I am intrigued by trying it. It's the Pete Fairy, uh, F-A-E-R-I-E, -E, spelled a little differently. Um, this is going to be blend number three, and it's a 10-year-old, 50%. Uh, we'll do that last, though, because if you start with Pete, you're going to end up having Pete pretty much the rest of the day. Um, hey, Jason, good to see you, man. Yeah. I, uh, it's been rough. Uh, if you didn't catch me saying earlier, I've had a lot of, uh, issues with, uh, some leaks in the basement all of a sudden where I had to get some drywall, um, you know, um, taken out and paneling taken out and all that. And it's going to be probably at least a week or two before they're even done. So hopefully, uh, I can figure out how to do this, uh, you know, on the side, I got some bottles back there that you don't, usually don't see. All this back here is completely gone because uh, I had to move everything, and I didn't want the uh, contractors like you know tripping over my bottles and stuff because I literally had like good amount back in the back there. But this is not horrible. I'm, I've been trying to hide, hide some of that paneling you see in the corner there. Try to use my head as a as a block, but as I like to move around a bit, so. 
it's not the easiest to deal with, but we'll make do. Nope, just popped in, but Philly on the house stuff. I tore up half my floor last night, and all the walls are halfway through paint. Ooh, patching and painting, I guess. Yeah, that's uh, – if you tore it up half uh, of your floor last night, uh, you're in the same kind of paint I'm in. And, yes, it's freaking hot outside, and I figured, you know, what the hell, let's have a uh, – let's have a um, – Let's have a uh, live stream and get out of the heat because I was in the heat for a couple hours a day too, and I was thirsty. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm really thirsty. So let's have us a little sip of something. We'll do the Pete Ferry second because we want to, you know. Oh yeah, the '70s. Yeah, this house was built in '61, but I think they did the wood paneling down here in the '70s or. 83 at the earliest because of um, that's when the second party bought the house and we bought it from the people that had uh, that had it. Uh, so it's only th three owners uh, from 61 to 83, I believe, 83 to uh, a few years ago when we've been here. I guess now it's been about five years now. So, uh, hey, Whiskey Pilgrim, hope all is well with you as well. Just been to Campbelltown and heading back to Edinburgh. You're so lucky, man. I, I would give anything to uh, to be uh, in Edinburgh or Campbelltown, Isla, Islands, any anywhere in Scotland right now would be ideal. I, I, I would uh, not want to come back. Let's get us a little dream here. We do have, sorry for the in and out frame, uh, my construction's making this a little bit, um, what's the word for it, um, challenging. So um, we poured, look at that color. And this is not chill filtered, this is natural. This is an Akintoshin, it's a 5.70. I'll get the bottle out here too. Give you guys a little look, see. It's the, um, this guy here. Um, in the absence of convention, which is an interesting name, uh, this is an 18-year-old Akintoshin that I picked up, uh, 5.70, and um, I've been kind of playing around with the different taste profiles. You'll see that with their color strips. They kind of give you an idea of what you're kind of in for. And this is a first fill hogshead and ex oloroso uh, sherried uh, from Lowland region, of course. Uh, distilled on October the 11th, a few days before my birthday, the 14th, on the year 2000, it looks like. Yes, 2000. So this uh, was an interesting pick. And unfortunately, uh, when I got it, the cork popped off in the bottle. Maybe I was too aggressive and, and I was really wanting to pop it open. Uh, really quickly, maybe too quickly, and I broke the cork in the thing. So I had to uh, get one of my wife's wine corkers. I'm hoping that does it justice. Uh, I made sure it's fairly snug in there. It's already half gone almost anyway, so uh, I don't think it's going to make much difference. I don't think I have to worry about gassing this one, <laughs> thankfully. Uh, this is, a, this is a, a nice little treat. I also picked up something else we'll do next time, and it is um let's see we did a dolma before this one we also picked up a really interesting glen turret peated glen turret from uh, smws and that i think is going to be um a really good show too for you peat heads out there like myself that is interested in see what is uh, SMWS doing when it comes to uh, peated offerings. Uh, thankfully, there are many, so you get lucky with that. Uh, Pilgrim says he's going to be uh, flying home from Sweden tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it, it was interesting. Uh, I called Ben uh, and uh, was chatting with him about a couple options, and I'm collecting one of every distillery, so I have that in mind, and I'm like, Hey Ben, I'm looking at this one and this one, but what else, you know, do you like out there? What do you, you kind of know my profile since you've seen the show a few times. What what do you think would be a good, um, you know, option for me to to take other than these? And he brought up the Glen Turret as being a um, an interesting one, and it yeah, being peated. Um, the only Glen Turret I've had outside of this was a um, a 
an independent bottling, um, Gordon McPhail, I believe, was the, uh, yes, was the uh, independent bottling, the McPhail collection and it specifically. And it was a Glen Turret, uh, I think it was 11 year, I'm going to say. I could be off on that, but I believe it was about 11 year. It wasn't peated, but it, well, it had some smoke to it, so maybe it was slightly peated. Um, it wasn't as peated as this one. Uh, it had a lot of like sulfuric notes to it, kind of reminiscent of a, a really heavy McAllen, um, a Benevis, um, a Glendulin. Um, what other ones have really heavy sulfuric? Uh, Bullmore 15 Darkest kind of thing, the funk. It had that kind of funkiness going on. I enjoyed it. I rather liked the Glen Tour, uh, that version. And then uh, I won't blow the show next time, but this one was also damn good and also um, fun to get into. We'll talk about that a little later. Hey, hey good to see you, Donner. And uh, DHS. Yeah, uh, y'all missed about my uh, repairs I ha I'm having to do. There's a little bit of stuff I'm trying to hide with my head over here, but I'm not doing too good job of it. But I'm having a lot of um, work done down here in the basement. So you get to see some of my bottles way down at the other end at least. Uh, I do have some on the other side that you don't even see uh, usually because uh, I've got the camera completely different. Don't miss the Clembergy. Clembergy, I think is how you say it. Glimbergy, yeah, that's not Glimorangy, Glimbergy, that sounds right. Um, if you haven't had one of those, Glimbergy. Now, I'm pretty sure I've had one because we did touch every distillery with um, the group I'm in. Let's just since we're chatting about it, and since I do have a, a laptop here, yes, I am a ham radio operator, Donner. Good, good call, good, good eye there. I guess you see my. Uh, Ella Craft KX3, my 500 watt amp. I got a 100 watt amp. I've got a, a speaker back here. I've got a pan adapter and some digital mode. Some doing over here. So, yeah, I, I, I've got a lot of uh, QSL cards back here. You can't see from all over the world. I, I like to do uh, digital voice and uh, CW contacts, which is Morse code. So, anyway, um, where was I at? <laughs> Hard G. As I've always heard, Glen, oh, guh, so Glenberg, Glenbergy, Glenbergy? The 80s are calling, they want their tech back. <laughs> hey, now, ham radio operation is not an 80s thing, believe it or not. A lot of digital modes, especially FT8, if you look up FT8, this is a brand new mode that you can do some really nice weak signal uh, contacts with. One watt up to five watts, and you could talk to the world with it. You can't do that with CW or other digital modes. You, you, I mean, you can if you're lucky with good propagation, but you have to have, um, you know, usually a lot of more wattage, like 50 watts. But you definitely um, have to uh, look up some of the new stuff that we're doing with digital modes. So it's it's not 80s tech. And believe me, when there's a hurricane or an earthquake and you can't use your cell towers anymore, you can't, everyone's using, you know, jamming at the cell towers and, and you can't make a phone call, I can still make that attack. I don't need any wires. I'm just bouncing off my signal off the ionosphere and coming back down to wherever, you know, it's, it's going everywhere all over the world. So I don't need no sticking wires. <laughs> Yeah, nothing wrong with these tech. Also, if it's it's functional, and that is definitely functional. Uh, he believes he heard it from Ralphie and Roy about uh, Glen Glenbergy. Okay, well, if, if Ralphie and Roy are cool with it, I, I should be too. Let me. Uh, for some reason, it uh, it masked Jason's uh, comment. Let me show this. Says the guy who builds analog synthesizer circuits from the 60s for a living. Wow, that's awesome, man. I didn't know you did that for a living. I love uh, analog synths. I wish I had a good one. Um, what, you going to talk to your mom in a hurricane? <laughs> no, for like emergency purposes, you know, when you got to get the word out, like when there's racing and stuff going on, when. Uh, Anytime you need to get the word out, you know, you got to love old tech. I mean, think about it. If you listen to a synthesizer, it's a good point. An 80s synth sounds so more realistic. It's, it sounds so much uh, just richer and thicker than a digitalized thing. It's the same concept with vinyl versus digital sound. It's like, yeah, I mean, Jason's uh, 
got it down. The only synth I have still is from the 90s. I wish it was an 80s synth. It's a Roland JV40, uh, I believe. Let me go see what that is. I think it's a JV. XP, it's an XP40, I think. Let me see something. Let's take a quick look. I've got it in... It's in the back here, unfortunately, in the closet. I haven't had it. I haven't played with it in quite a while. Um, used to play professionally, actually. A um, little bit of every instrument, but uh, I think it's an XP40 uh, workstation. It's a Roland from the 90s. It's it's pretty good. It's pretty much mint condition, too. I've, I have taken it out here and there, but I've always treated it pretty well. But, yeah, I mean, a Moog or, or some sort of... Uh, yeah, some sort of uh, synth like that, man. That would be pretty cool. We'll we'll talk about that later, Jason. <laughs> I might have actually. I might be a customer of yours before long. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm a big fan too. Anyway, let's get back to the whiskey before I make a complete tangent. But uh, yeah, maybe uh, I do a lot of uh, of music on the side. Maybe I should do a music channel. I'll probably, I probably uh, have a better. Uh, like at least a bigger audience, but that's okay. <laughs> Donner says he saw the Kill Karen on a recent Ralphie shopping video. It was cool. That Kill Karen. Which Kill Karen are you talking about there, Donner? I'm 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 curious. Someone above me is running laps in their apartment. I know it's hot up and go work on the gym. I hear you there, man. That's crazy. Oh my. All right, let's get let's get on this uh now this one was interesting. I'll be honest with you. When I first uh, a little quirk uh, remnants there, I had to get rid of. Um, thankfully, I didn't get any cork taintage um, or you know sediments in my whiskey, which is a no no. I don't like that at all. Thankfully, I didn't have to filter it out. If you ever do drop a cork in a called uh, Glencairn. Um, there's a couple options. My favorite is getting the unbleached coffee filters and filtering it out uh, that way because that doesn't affect the taste of the whiskey. And it's a really good filter out for all the sediments that get in there. Um, thankfully, I didn't even have to do that on this guy. I don't see anything there. But the, the interesting thing about this particular 5.70 to me was neat. It's perfect. I... I thought that since it's cast strength whiskey, and this is another learning experience that you get sometimes, um, just because it's over 50, and this one is probably 50, let's take a look. Sorry about the uh, back and forth um, under the circumstances with the construction. Uh, but to see this, this is a 56.3. So being as high as 56.3, you would think that it would be a no-brainer that you'd have to have some water on this, but this is not the case. I actually do not like this dram very much with water. I love it without water. It is a huge difference to me. So my initial uh, reaction was, you know, great color for 18-year, no chill filtering, no color, great legs, uh, probably a medium mouth coat. I see some running, but, you know, nothing major. It holds its shape fairly well at the top. Nose is an excellent blend of fruit, spice, and uh, vanilla cream. And some uh, very faint tobacco, dinky wet notes. And just surprising what's going on for an Akantoshan. You know, Lowlands have a bad rep, I think, of being low in flavor and it's not the case and i'll talk about another dram that i really like um vlad nakadella a15 is a great warm-up dram for any night that you're doing um spicy sweet 15 year goodness of sherry uh, oloroso and um, it's just exquisite um this is no not a lot of different um uh, as far as quality a little older which is nice too Oh, it's a single cask of Karen 15 year. Wow. Ooh. I mean, it's spicy because it is high ABV, but the, 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 the palate is, is perfect without the water. Now, maybe I put too much water on. That can't happen. 
what I'm going to try this time, since I'm not afraid of it, and it is a little hot with being 56, if I could get it at that 50 to 52% tasting point, that would be ideal. But I, I don't want to go too much water. So we're, gonna, we're just going to tap it with um, some uh, with a dropper. Let me uh, turn around. Sorry about the turning around and all that mess. It's hard to get all my stuff in this area because I don't want to get water or any liquids next to my electronic equipment if I can help it. So we're going to try to keep this stuff on the side here because, as you know, water and electronics don't mix. <laughs> Not at all. No liquids, for that matter. Um, I have had the mistake of getting water on my computer before, which was really bad. So we're going to do literally a couple drops this time and i'm thinking that um i probably i'm gonna put more in back in the glass than i did in the in the thing literally like a two or three drops this time because i think i dashed it before and when you're using when you're you know doing scotch malt whiskey society offerings unfortunately it's um way too easy to overwater that's the problem, I think. And I, yeah, I don't mind water. Um, they don't mind water if power stays off until they dry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. But and it's not salt water. Yeah, there's a lot of ifs, ands, or buts there. <laughs> As a synth guy, you know that you you can't be having any liquid around that. <laughs> Only because Karen and I have an eight-year cast strength. It tastes good. Yeah, I, I do have the uh, the eight-year cast strength. It is good. It is. Uh, you have to play with the water with it to get it just right, though. And I think that's the big difference between the eight-year cast strength and the twelve. I like them both. The twelve is better for just popping it open, not adding anything to it, having a sip, being on your merry way. It's outstanding. If you're a whiskey connoisseur and you really like playing with the whiskey, the eight-year cast strength's a better offering. Uh, even though it might take you a little time to tweak it with a couple of drops here and there, when you finally get what you're looking for, it is outstanding because you have a higher ABV that way. They had the opening day bottle, also a 15-year bourbon. Wow. Well, it is young. You probably like the 12. It's similar to Tim Bank. Uh, spring Bank 10 yeah it's it's to me the the i agree with jason the only the, another big difference to me is that i find the kilkarian to have a lot more interesting good herbal notes than uh a spring Bank 10 as well i think there's a little more i don't know if it's green or if it's um the type of malt or what what it is about the particular um Kilkarren 12, it makes it like that, but it's, to me, it's got a, not just a little lighter, maybe, maybe because it is lighter, you can pick out the herbal stuff a little easier. Maybe that's the difference to me. Uh, a 19 year Royal Lochnagar cast strength, Royal Lochnagar, Jesus, that sounds good. Is that an independent bottling there, DHS? I'm just curious. And, uh, Jason thinks it's also more herbal with the spring bank if with more fruity. Yeah. Yeah, they're both great. It's just, yeah, if you, if you don't mind an herbal dram, and I think that's the catch with Kilcarran, uh, you either love it or you're not really that keen with it. And I think the big difference is the um, ability to enjoy some of that herbal essence. <laughs> oh, Cadence Head. Yeah, 50% off. Damn, man. Cadence Head, Roll Lot Nagar of Cast Strength sounds. Yeah, as soon as I saw the G, I knew you meant C. <laughs> yeah, the Cadence Head is great, I've heard, uh, for independent bottles. And uh, the 19-year-old Rolt Lautnagar sounds damn good, especially at cast strength. That's just an unreal combination that you have a great independent bottler, you have a great ear, you have a great cast strength option. I mean, that's like a unicorn almost in itself. All right, now with a couple you know drops let's see if we get anything different here you almost made me spit out my whiskey dhs only 66 bucks that's crazy how is that possible 19 years old cast strength 
how is it only $66? Do you mean like, nah, it can't be. <laughs> is whiskey really that cheap where you got it? Uh, it was half off on clearance. Wow. That party source still haunts my dreams. Man, so if it's 66, it normally double. Let's see, that's 12. Uh, I'm trying to remember the 60 is 120. Let's see, 130 something, 134, 132, somewhere around there. Another Kentucky store. Wow, man. That's a hell of a deal. Even at 160, uh, I'm sorry, even at 170 something, that is still, you would think, a great deal for a cast strength. Uh, you think that'd be great for a cast strength whiskey. Hey, Hoagie, good to see you, man. I was hoping some of you Europeans would be able to stop by this time if I had it a little earlier, uh, especially on a Saturday. They sell 25 euro whiskey for around 80, 75 to 85 euros. Wow. That is insane. GJ on Scotch Hills, Kentucky. Wow. Good job, yeah. Yeah, Kentucky is uh, great for all sorts of whiskey, it sounds like. Hopefully, if I get a chance to visit my family, um, and uh, hopefully soon. It's been a while. I don't get a lot of chances to go. It's really hard with uh, traveling and, and the heat, and uh, it's just uh, not an easy ordeal, But uh, especially the older I get. But um, hopefully get a get a way to do it and i'll be able to uh take a look around maybe uh get my stepdad uh dave out to uh scour the uh whiskey uh places with me <laughs> i've heard westport's pretty good dhs have you ever tried westport whiskey i might ask you that before sorry if i already did but uh i've heard it's pretty good i don't know if it's the best place in louisville area to, to look but that's probably where i would go first from what i've seen Tell me if that makes sense or not. How's uh, Germany? Oh, you haven't even heard of Westport. Okay, never mind. Uh, how's uh, Germany there, Hoagie? Uh, are you having a little sippage with us, hopefully? It's it's more scotch time, your time, than our time. But I was hot and thirsty, so I thought, what the hell, let's give it a little go. Uh, even with all the construction in my basement going on. Uh, thanks uh, for stopping by, Whiskey Pilgrim. It's always good to see you. Hopefully, uh, see you again soon, and, and be careful there in Scotland. Uh, wish I was there with you. Drink a few drams for me, too. Hey, Hoagie, have you by chance had the uh, this uh, SMWS? It's uh, 5.70. It's uh, an Akintoshin 18-year. Uh, really well done, really good. He said, a friend just got back from the U.S., uh, brought me a bottle of High West Bourbon. When I, wow, nice. That is a good one. I, um, I've been lucky enough to have that myself and enjoy it. I am a High West fan. Um, the Campfire and some of the other stuff. Uh, I think High West does Midsummer's Night's nice Dram too, don't they? Pretty, I'm pretty sure they do. I've always been a pretty good fan of their rice stuff, if that's the case. Um, just handing out the 25-year Highland Park of uh, to Mike of Mike's Whiskey Review. He had a few of them. Oh, that's, that is good timing. I was hoping that nobody else was doing a show right now. I kind of try to do a quick look, and but I, I, my my viewership's so so minimal that uh, it probably wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> no one would lose any people, so it's all good. I just love the meld of the fruits and the spices and the cream and the vanillas and the the only thing it doesn't have. I shouldn't say that because it does have a little herbal action in there too. I mean, it has a little mytholiptus, like a medicinal property. I mean, it's got a little bit of everything. If you go and look for it, you'll probably find it in this. I haven't had a, the Akintoshin, but a wonderful uh, 25 Akintoshin from Signatory Village. Oh, cool. I bet that would be damn good. Uh, that's it's almost got a, well, it's got five years. <laughs> Plus, uh, so seven years on this guy, that'd be uh, unreal, amazing if it was a high ABV. Do you remember the ABV on that um, signatory by chance? This one's pretty nice. This is a 56 point something, 56.8, I believe. I'll show it again. I haven't uh, shown the bottle in a while. 
This is a uh, 56.3, uh, very, very uh, nice um, presentation as usual. And uh, I love just the, the uniformity, the consistency that you get with the cast strength uh, deal from these guys. And um, no complaints, no complaints so far. Shipping kind of sucks, but, you know, I can't really bitch at them about shipping issues when, you know, there's no way to just wheel up a car and buy it. So I wish there was, man. They have one hell of a drive through if there was a, a SMWS drive through That's my new, that's my new idea. SMWS, Ben, somebody, if you're listening, you guys should have a drive through in, like, the D.C. area. 51.4 for the 25, still available for 151 euros around here. Damn, you guys are spoiled rotten in, in Europe. <laughs> I mean that in a nice way, Hoagie. <laughs> you guys are spoiled rotten. It's, I guess it's like Kentuckians with the bourbon. If you're a huge Kentucky fan, you probably think everybody in Kentucky is spoiled rotten because they have access to everything. But the, being a, a Kentuckian who loves scotch is like the hardest thing ever. 151 for a 25. Yeah, man. It's like that's a that's a good price, I have to say. I think it's a good price. I don't know about you, DHS. I think your frowny cry, cry sad face means you think it's also a good price. <laughs> oh man. And thankfully, with a couple drops this time, I think my first issue, and I'm glad I didn't bash it. I'm glad I wasn't reviewing it at the time. My first go with it. I overwatered it and it just was was not very good. But now that I got a, a feel for it, I'm right on the Kentucky border. And let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff I can't get to. Huh? Too many bourbon lovers in Kentucky. Yeah, I guess that is the only downfall is that if you're too close to the uh, origin, you might actually have a hard time finding anything. So, I, I hear you there, man. Oh, man. It is a hot day everywhere in the south. Uh, well, most of the U.S., it seems like. But, yeah, I mean, at least in, in, in Hoagie's situation for a German, Germany's not, not too close, probably, because of, like you said, the Scotch people probably don't have as good of a selection. But... With being close enough to the same continent and being able to get stuff from there, I think he's kind of in a sweet spot, but that's a guess. Tiki is great for overpriced non height limited editions. Overpriced non height limited editions. Oh, man. Yeah, you probably have your fill of uh, all the uh, specials, quote unquote specials, that uh, go out from all sorts of distilleries. What's your favorite? I'm not a bourbon guy per se, but I have a couple favorites. What's your favorite bourbon, DHS? I'm just curious. If if you had just one bottle, doesn't matter the price, doesn't matter the age, doesn't matter the, you know, it could be whatever. It could be, you know, whatever, um, you know, you're into. Uh, what's your favorite? Mine so far, Jose A. Magnus. See, the sad thing is I never even heard of that. What do you like about the Jose Magnus? Is it a true Kentucky bourbon? Is it Bardstown? Where uh, where is it? I'm just curious. Uh, located. Well, that's my possible to get bourbon. GTS otherwise. Huh. GTS. GTS. What does that stand for? It goes to show I'm, I'm not a... Yeah, it's kind of local for me, I guess, but it's weird. Truly haven't found a better place for Scotch single malt than Germany. Even Scotland is generally more expensive due to taxes, I think. Yeah, Hoagie, I think, is in a sweet spot. So maybe we should have like some sort of get-together in Germany. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. If I could talk my wife into traveling into, uh, into a, um, you know, little trip to – to Europe, man, I think I'll have to get out to uh, get out there and give it a go and uh, say hi to Yogi Hoagie in person. Hopefully, <laughs> I'll have to organize something. Maybe okay, George T. Stag, gotcha. 
Jose A. Magnus is sourced whiskey. They do it out of D.C. It's Indiana bourbon aged in sherry and XO casses, but it's in D.C.? Wow. I've never even heard of it, as sad as that is. Magnus is a bourbon for scotch drinkers. Wow. Well, you, you might have in, piqued my interest here if it's out of D.C. and it's Indiana bourbon aged in... Well, it can't be bourbon if it's Indiana. You know that. <laughs> Bourbon's from the KY, baby. <laughs> What's your favorite bourbon that's actually true Kentucky bourbon, DHS? That's, uh, is that George T. Stagg, probably? I'm assuming that, I think that's a, an actual bourbon bourbon. I'll wait you with my 100 bottles of open scotch. Wow. 100 open bottles of scotch, Ogie? I don't have you in that. I've got a few open, maybe in closer to 30 to 40, but not 100, man. Jeez. I'll definitely take you up on that. That'll be a fun... Uh, That'll be a fun deal. Just to see, uh, I've never been in Germany, so just to see see it and experience uh, that, plus have a uh, couple uh, access to a couple bottles, that would be pretty damn nice, I have to say. And you're in Berlin, I believe, too, if I'm not mistaken. So that should be pretty easy access, I would think. Uh, you close to an airport, Hoagie? I'm just curious if, uh, do you know any good places? to if if i did talk to some people into meeting in germany i wonder if there's any good places to congregate to uh to you know on mass to 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 maybe meet up and have a if everyone brought you know brought two or three bottles with them um it'd be a hell of a meetup even if there was just you know five or six of us i think because that would be 12 14 different tastes right there um on my screen, my question came in before your answer. Oh, sorry. I still like man, it's quite a lot. It's not Kentucky Straight Bourbon, it's bourbon. Yeah, I gotcha. Oh, Stag is Buffalo Trace, gotcha. Honestly, until they ran out, Boone County 1833 from Indy would have been the best bourbon I'd get. That wasn't finished, huh? That's interesting that you like, you prefer the Indiana stuff, it seems like, than the Kentucky stuff overall, minus the Stag uh, Buffalo Trace uh, option. I'll keep that in mind. Uh, what about you, Jason? You got a favorite bourbon that's Kentucky? Uh, how about you, Hoagie? Uh, anyone else watching? Donner, if you're still around. I'm just curious what you guys like the best. And um, might you know, give it a try. It's a lot, hell of a lot easier to get than scotch over here. So just as a different option, MGP has been making the best available bourbon. MGP. You guys in your acronym, I mean, I know all the acronyms pretty much for scotch, but when it comes to bourbon, Miller Genuine something, I don't know. <laughs> MGP. I should know it, but I just don't have the acronyms down. Let me know what that is. I have to think about a place. Ideally, somebody with a big yard somewhere, huh? Could be probably, I mean, the 10 people at a friend's say so. so also in the whiskey. Wow, okay. Well, it's definitely uh, just just a thought, Hoagie. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll see if there's any way. I'm not even sure if I could do it in the summertime. It's awfully soon now. But uh, if I made a plan, maybe, uh, maybe in some time. Uh, but, yeah, I don't see more than 10 wanting to, to show up. I'd be surprised if it was more than, like, five or six, to be honest with you. So... But it'd be kind of a cool idea. I have zero idea what G MGP means. That's just the guys who make all the source stuff. Oh, okay. Old Force 1920 is another good option of a bourbon available in this Huh. Old Forester 1920. Interesting. Barrel proof any batch is worth grabbing. Okay. And I don't know too many is the Blanton's Gold and Logic. Okay. The old ones. The ECBP. It sounds like the ECBP is pretty much most people's current favorite that I've, I've uh, kind of you know put my finger in the water and to see what people like. And it seems like that's pretty much a solid go-to is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Okay. It's on the darker water side, my opinion. Okay. Well, that gives me an idea of what, you know what to look for if I ever see it on the shelf, maybe snag an old bottle if I can find it. Blanton's Gold is probably really tough to find, I imagine, too. Blanton's is very famous, um, has been in Kentucky for for quite a while. So anything that's Weller's or Blanton's or, like, excuse me, Elijah Craig, it, all the uh, Colonel 
T, uh, what's his face? Um, the Colonel, you know how I'm talking about. That's another one that's really uh, – E.H. Taylor. That's a, that's a tough one. Get the uh, Jose A. Magnus. Okay, I'll give that a definite try since it's uh, local. You can't get Blanton's Gold in America. It isn't sold here. Oh, it's probably one of those you have to order overseas back here kind of thing. I have ran into that where you can't get like travel retail exclusives. Or you can't get um, things that are not sold here, but you can always find ways to uh, get salsa different ways at least. So we'll have to see about that. I also like the Pikesville ride. Now that's the funny thing. Pikesville is, is, is not too far from here. Um, the Pikesville ride stuff. I've always wanted to try. I've never really seen it, but I haven't really done a whole lot of looking. But I have to I have to go and see about that. I've heard a lot of good things about Pikesville Rye too. Went to improve very much. Huh. Okay. Well, I really appreciate your all's heads up on some of those uh, bourbon slash American whiskeys because it's not uh, easy to get into if you're not already a veteran. I feel very comfortable with the Scotch stuff, but the uh, the bourbon stuff is a whole other thing. You like the four gate rum sherry rum cast finish, but it's two hundred dollars for an eleven year old bourbon. Well, that's pricey, but it, you know it's the same kind of thing with the Springbank eleven uh, local barley stuff. It's two hundred bucks for a bottle of that, and it's 10, 11 years. So it all depends. I guess the rum finish is what you're paying for extra there. Um, hmm. The, the Art Big Drum didn't really do a whole lot for me, so I hope it's a lot better than that room finish. <laughs> I mean, it was okay, but compared to the Grooves or the Kelpie, I like the uh, Grooves and the Kelpie a hell of a lot better than the Drum. That's just me. Do not get the local Barley Nine Year. Yeah, I remember DHS had a not such a good time with that kind of young tasting, and it sounded like. Four rows a single barrel. Yeah, I have heard of those being pretty good across the uh, thing. Do get it, but send it to me. <laughs> okay, I'll have to definitely keep, yeah, the LESB, the LE something B I've had. Um, there's Asian and Sherry Barrel, but then they used for rum and finally bourbon. Well, that's a lot of complexity, so I can see why it's a couple hundred dollars for even if it's only 11. Yeah, rum and Sherry notes. So, yeah, if you get both of those and they're done well, try the drum lately. It was as good as the 10. <laughs> Summer drum not worth the price for me, though. Nah, not me either, Hoagie. I, and I, you know me. I'm a huge Ardbeg fanboy. Like, I usually praise them for everything they touch. The 10 is, yeah, it's just okay. And the uh, the drum just didn't – committee release, too. Uh, it just didn't, just didn't do much uh, – for me when it comes to taste quality compared to the kelpie and the um and the uh, grooves i thought and especially the dark cove oh my god night and day difference uh i'd take the dark cove over any of those any day but the kelpie and Dr grooves were actually solid uh committee release uh, offerings but i think rum casts are just really tough to get right especially in isla when you deal with peat when you deal with a rum cask or even a port cask for that matter it's just so difficult to do it correctly, and it's very rarely well done. Um, I'm surprised a lot of these Isle guys even try it. It's that hard to get right. And even some of these Highlands, uh, Space Sides and stuff, um, they can't even really do it right some of the time. DHS says, has the uh, non-CR for 100 bucks is a bit expensive, but I'd rather like it. Okay, I might I might try the, uh, the non-CR. Um, Maybe, maybe it just wasn't a, a good batch. I mean, sometimes that happens with these these uh, offerings. You know, consistency sometimes is an issue. So maybe I'll get lucky, pick up a, a non CR version, and have a go and see. You know, if it tickles the ivories, hopefully, uh, hopefully it's a bit better than than the CR experience at least, uh, but not bad. I, I still gave it three and a half stars. It's just when you're used to the Kelpie and the grooves and the dark cove and, and some of those uh committee releases being so special to being four and a half to five star whiskeys that's when I, I even if it's a disappointment it's not a complete letdown if you know what i mean hoagie says dhs uh 
also for a matter of price comparison, different markets you hear the tin you can get a sale for about forty bucks. Wow, the drum for one thirty. That's nuts. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a twenty three year for three hundred after tax. Oh, you're killing me, dude. You're killing me. <laughs> I'll have to. Um, I'll have to get my own bottle of that at some point. It's just hard to save up that kind of money for a bottle. I mean, I can, but I, I got to get my own 23-year-old version of Art Bag for that price. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than the Lafroy 30, 32 year, that's for sure. Uh, and they're 25 for that matter. Hell, it's it's uh, probably comparable to the present day 18 prices that are aftermarket. If you think about it, they're about three, to even more than that. Ohio decided to get rid of them all. I need to, I guess, try to find a, got a case? Holy moly, man. I'll have to do some digging and see if I could find a price like that, because usually it's five to $600 from what I've seen. But if I found a price for a 23-year-old for 300 after tax especially, I would jump on that. That's a hell of a deal, and it's a good whiskey. Mm. Very well done. I'm going to keep sipping on this. It's very tasty. In the um, aspect of time, though, I'm going to switch over to the peated uh, offering and see how that goes. Not throwing this out or any way or anything. I'm just going to set this to the side for now. We'll come back. <laughs> Let's see. No, we got the peat fairy here. Uh, donor codename Alpha. You know who you are. I really, really, really appreciate it. It's a. Uh, it's quite a quite an interesting thing i don't know anything really about this dram let me get a clean here and a fresh one here um, let's see okay whiskey fest from dc last year that was a good one all right so let's do uh, that's a reasonable pour and see what we get out of this deal I'm going to do a little look up on the side and see what we can find out about this one. Oh, hopefully the Lafroy 10 Cast Strength 11 is going to be released. Uh, interesting. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, let me get um, a browser window open here. Uh, let's see. new window one second there we go um let me drag it over here so it's not out of the way so much move this so we don't spill it everywhere that'd be my luck get things running and then all of a sudden have a big spill episode <laughs> all right let's uh I think distiller will have this i could be wrong but i usually go with them first for like info um uh, on some bottles they're not so good about smws offerings yet they do have some but um not all of them let's see f a e r i e it's like a special way of spelling it they don't have it in here yet you got to be kidding me they even have buffalo traces experimental collection of fire pot barrel aged and they have a peat fire flame, 29.250, but they don't have the peat fairy. Okay, well, let's scratch that. Let's go peat fairy just off on a limb, batch three. Here we go. We'll go to straight to the source. SMWS has it on their site, at least. Uh, the outturn's pretty high. It's 2900 uh 2948 bottles so a little underneath 3000 that means it's still probably easily obtainable at 50 percent um abv um it's a first fill x bourbon barrel not too surprising for a peated uh blended uh, offering but i wish there was a little oloroso or px or another cask influence in it but it could still be quite tasty. Distilled uh, July 6th, 2007 and aged 10 years. 
It's a harmonious marriage between first fill space side casks and a collection of hand selected Isla casks. Okay, I'm cool with that. I'm not going to read their entire thing. They only let you get two bottles per member. That's interesting. So that I'm glad they're trying to get it uh, get it out and about at least to as many people as they can. Now they say lightly peated. Um, I'm trying to see if there's any PPM information on here. I don't see it technically on here. If it's Isla peated though, it's probably at least 20 to 30. I'm going to give a guess on PPM. I could be wrong. If anyone knows the, uh, if anyone knows the uh, ABV, uh, not ABV, the PPM, uh, phenol, uh, parts per million let me know on the uh, peat fairy i'm curious thank you so much huggy for breaking that open i have a log a log of one 18 fish shield from last year's fish shield that i have not opened yet so if i ever make it to to germany or if you ever make it over here and i still have it you're definitely welcome to a sip of the log of one 18 fish shield if you already haven't had it you probably already have many times but um I need to do a show on it at some point. It's just one of those I was saving for like uh, New Year's or Christmas. And I already had a couple other ones that I was celebrating with. So I, I didn't do that one. But you had the 21 year for $234 too. Are you talking about an Ardbeg DHS? And it, was it a distilleries edition? If they still had an Ardbeg 21, it was only 234 Jeez, man, that's a great price. Holy hell. That's insane. I've got to I've got to get some of these old Ardbeg bottles. That's for sure. I wonder what what. Uh, also, they just talk about space side and Isla casks. Now, let's see if anyone's done some more homework, or if they've been a little more um, outgoing with their their um, information and talked about. A possible um, which you know distilleries are they're dealing with here um, I'm looking here to see here we go oh I found this guy named grumpy Piper on Facebook he's just talking about this particular bottle and he's using their notes he's not giving me anything extra darn it i want extra <laughs> i'm gonna try one more time and if it's not there we'll just we'll just say that uh space side island is i'm sorry space side isla is going to be our only hints that we're going to be able to dig out of this um this is batch three i believe e blend three I believe that's the same as the batch three type of thing. Uh, batch three, batch three. So I probably should be more specific with this to make sure in case they use different distilleries for a, a different purpose. Green, Green Welly Stop, that's a really good place to get some salsa sometimes. 99 pounds, but they don't have it in stock. Out of stock already. Jesus, they must have sold a boatload of it. Oh, uh, let's see. No, they just talk about the SMWS stuff and the ABV. It's 10 years old. There is an age statement, at least, so that's a good thing. ex bourbon barrels, but nothing with the uh, distillery. So if you, by chance, know, wow, yes, Ardbeg official bottling, DHS, it, it, Please, if, if you can, if you find it in your heart somehow, please hold one. If you get a 21-year-old and a 23-year-old, I don't care which version. I know there's different ones out there. If you get a couple of them and you don't need to open them, maybe hold on a couple of those for me, and I'll, I'll make it worth your while later on <laughs> if, if, if I can. Uh, I'd love to have either one of those, man, a 21 or a 23 for 234 or the three whatever 300 after tax man that's just unreal prices for those i couldn't imagine that um wow <laughs> i wonder if this is our big in here this would be nice speaking of isla distilleries um 
hopefully it's easy to discern. I'm usually pretty good at telling Kalila Pete from Maga Volan Pete, from Ardbeg Pete, from Lafroig Pete, from even Bunahaven's like rarely peated stuff. Um, Usually I have a good sense of what it is. Friends got them. He's selling me a 23 that he has plans for. That's so sad. <laughs> well, maybe I'll get lucky and find a deal like that. I'm such an art big fanboy, man. The fact that I don't have a 21 or 23, I think it's just, it's just sacrilegious. It's just sad. <laughs> anyway, all right. So let's go back and... Um, now, with this being no chill filtering or coloring, of course it's going to be light for a 10-year-old. But guess what? That's what I expect a 10-year-old whiskey to look like. I don't want it to be, you know, the same color as an 18 or 21 year. If it is, I know it's not right. I know it's fake. I know it's, you know, it's not the real deal. Wow, this has got a heavier mouth coat look than I expected it to. Probably because this is such a high ABV for, you know, 50-ish. On the other side, I could hold a 19 visual for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, if, if I can make it, it, if you need to finish it, I completely understand. But if you do have um, a little heel left over later on, I'll definitely take you up on that, Hoagie. <laughs> I have never tasted any of the Lagavulin fish shells yet, so... Uh, the 18 that I have will be my first. The 19 I've heard is really well done, and the new one. And, uh, man, anything that's all going on at 19 years old is probably pretty damn good. Uh, Jason's never seen anything from Arbic other than the core range. Wow. You're cray-cray, man. <laughs> we got to get you We gotta get you some Dark Cove and some uh, Kelpie and some uh, Grooves, man. All three of those are outstanding. Oh, a bottle. Jeez, man. Uh, wow. <laughs> um, that would be, yeah, okay. I'll, uh, I'll talk with you uh, on email after the fact. Maybe we can uh, make some sort of arrangement or something. That'd be cool. I would be all over, over that because I do like to collect and I don't have an, a log of 119 of anything. So uh, I like to try with some 20 pluses. Yeah. Oh, you get, okay. I was going to say the, yeah, the 21 and 23s, you don't typically see too often in the field. The 20 something is an annual. Yeah. Um, but but usually uh, they're not too hard to find uh, the twenty somethings at least uh, most sites uh, have them available um, uh, that I've seen. It's hard uh, the twenty ones are pretty rare. You don't see that. Um, yeah, you only see them online. You don't see them uh, in stores anywhere. Uh, the last one was twenty two and twenty three. Before that was twenty one. I think I was lucky enough to have the twenty three uh, from Mister Lee also known as Aquaman for you uh, fans out there. Uh, he, uh, he, I think, brought the 23 version, if not the 22, and it was damn good. But, yeah, $500 is just too high uh, for any whiskey, in my opinion. I mean, 20, you know, 200 to 300, I think, is, is where they should, like, kind of stop trying to sell whiskey unless <laughs> – you know, I just don't know of very many people that can afford these thousand, two thousand, three thousand, up to ten thousand dollar bottles. It's just unless you're a diplomat or a lawyer or a doctor, I just don't see how you're going to be able. Or maybe a CEO of some sort. I just don't see how you're going to be able to afford it. It's just, just cray cray. All right. Ah, interesting. I'm sensing. Ooh, it's nice. It's um, it's it's definitely Isla, and I'm 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 torn between Kalila and something a little meatier because Kalila has a lot of nice uh, vegetal peat action going on. If you ever had the Mok, the Mok is a really good. Uh, Trevor retail version they have uh, even more vegetal, uh, vegetative I should say I guess than the um, regular Kalila offerings that are peated. Um, 
This has got that, but it also has a little bacon action in there. So I'm leaning away from Kalila. I, I don't think it's vegetal, vegetative. Um, I think it's the word I'm looking for enough. Um, it's got some herbal action, but it's got more of a meaty, dare I say, Ardbegian aspect to it. It's not, if it was more medicinal TCP iodine, I would say it's a Lafroy, but it doesn't have that either. Man, could it be Port Charlotte, also known as Brook Lottie's heavily peated stuff? It's not heavily peated, so I don't think it's a Port Charlotte either, or a Brook Lottie for that matter. I don't think it's Bunahaven. Could it be a log of one? Now, it could be a very, like if they took a log of one eight, aged it for a couple of years, and then married it with a nice bay side, that could be it. It does feel more like a log of one than it does a Kalila. I'm torn between Ardebeg and log of one for the Pete in the Pete Ferry. Ben, are you there? <laughs> Ben, if you're watching later, comment and let me know if I'm at least close between Ardbeg and Lagavulin for the peat you guys are using the peat ferry. Oh, it's such a nice peat. Uh, it's it's very light though. I mean, you do have to do a little digging to get it, but it's it's not it's not too faint. It's it's a, it's a nice level, even for someone that doesn't really get. I mean, it's definitely not a heavy peat by any means. It's it's a lighter, but it's um, it's enough to make it interesting on the smoke level, and that's why I'm really leaning towards a log of one. Ardbeg's got that too. They're no, they're not afraid to show you a little smoke. Hmm. Hoagie, have you uh, had the peat fairy? Are you familiar with it? It's a ten-year blend from SMWS. And uh, do you know if it is Ardbeg or Log of One, or if I'm way off in some other distillery? I have not had the Talisker 8 yet. It, that cast strength version is on my to-do list big time. I'm hoping that um, I can get my hands on it somewhere. I have not ever seen it in the wild. Uh, not to say it's not out there. And I haven't really looked a whole lot locally in a while since I've been ordering a lot of SMWS stuff. So it could be uh, it could be out there. I just had to give it another look. Uh, I've heard it's pretty good. What do you think, Hoagie? Do you like the Talisker 8? I've heard it, that cast strength's really good. Um, I have had a Talisker 8 independent bottle uh, by Bobby Purnell. Uh, I'm not sure if he gets to watch... Uh, anymore he was uh, around for a bit and sent some really nice um different offerings and one of them was a tosker eight i think it was a gordon mcphail's it was good it was uh it was uh spot on tasty i just uh never had the distillery's version of the eight yet and that's what i'd love to try that first sherry 20 i have was a tw buy but maybe there's more of it in chicago hmm Either way, the 19, one of the best, best whiskeys I've ever had. Wow. The 19. Which uh, distillery DHS? I'm kind of lost on that one. Hoagie switched from a Kalila to a Gordon McPhail version now. Maybe it's a peated Ardmore and unpeated Kalila. It's just there to confuse us. <laughs> That would be something else, Jason. If this was a peated Ardmore and unpeated Kalila, but no, I have had my share of unpeated Kalila, the 17 specifically, and I'm not a fan. Um, to me, that is a very heavy, heavy olive, olivey note. Um, the Kalila unpeated 17. And it is pricey, and it just did not. It's very salty. It's acidic. It's salty. It, it, it's just, uh, just did not do it for me. I'm not a fan of uh, the unpeated Clearly 17. Now they do have the unpeated 15. I haven't tried. I'm just worried that it's going to be a little bit of uh, a little even more intense than the 17 in a 
in a very uh ugh, oh man olive notes were just too heavy for me um hoagie says uh, sorry i don't know the pete ferry to talk to your society guy in berlin nice real nice chat maybe he knows more yeah definitely um I need to talk to Ben and see if uh, if I'm on to something. Because I'm pretty sure that this is a Lagavulin 10 or an 8 mixed with – I mean, no, it's got to be a 10 because it's all 10. I think for it to be labeled a 10-year, doesn't all of it have to be 10 or older? I think that's the, the rule. And Jason didn't get any olive on the 18, uh, Kalila 18 unheated. Never tried this, the 17. I guess they're they're very wide on the range of tastes. Or I had a maybe just a bad batch. Possibly it happens sometimes. Khalil is usually pretty good about consistency. Um, their twelves are consistently good. Um, I'd love to try the eighteen peated. I have not uh, unpeated. I'll give it a try. He says the Citral Reserve, which I am familiar with. I haven't tasted it. I know what it is. It is a unpeated. Um, one that's rare that's uh supposedly really good i've never tried it so i'm going to try that hoagie likes the uh the unpeated 18. so i guess maybe the 17 was just not a maybe the 17 unpeated just didn't hit the spot i still have a little bit somewhere believe it or not i had it for quite a while hopefully it's not dead maybe i should try it after a lot of exoxidation to see if it's uh if it's any good Hmm, 15 is good, but not as close to their any S Clela Stitchel Reserve. Yeah, I'll have to uh, I'll have to keep my eye on that one. I had I did have a chance, sadly, to get the Stitchel Reserve. I didn't jump on it. I probably should. When I had the chance. It's probably a, a real tough find nowadays because it's been around for a while. But I'll take you guys up on that. I'll I'll give it another shot. I just wish that I wasn't so disappointed with that Kalila 17 unpeated. Hmm. The 18 to me is almost like an Aaron with a tiny wisp of smoke. That sounds good. I like the Aaron 16. And if it had some smoke, man, that'd be even better. That'd be something. The funny thing is, and I think it's because it's um, a straightforward bourbon uh, cask, I don't get a lot of space side notes. This is more Isla heavy. But to me, that's a good thing. I'm not going to bitch about that. Uh, hold the shape, but definitely not as high ABV as the, you know, the 50 pluses, the, the 56 is and up. This is a 50. I uh, still hold the shape, uh, on the high end pretty well. I'm seeing one of those legs drop right now that was from the beginning. It's like a, some of it holds, some of it doesn't. It's a hybrid. Anyone try the Aaron 21? Very limited and seems quickly sold out here, but very good. Now that I would tr I would love to try, um, Hoagie. I've never had anything uh, different from Aaron besides the 16 is the only one I've tried. I will uh, I will keep an eye out for it and put it on the uh, to do list though, because um, I bet I mean it's hard at anything 21 years of age not to be at least pretty damn good. You would think, but Huh. The 14, you mean? No, 16. I, I've been lucky enough to only have the 16. Um, it's not sold anymore. I think they've I think they've discontinued it. Um, I think they switched to a 16 and an 18. I'm sorry, a 14 and an 18. But the only one I've had is a 16, an older uh, bottle. But it was good. Yeah, they did do a 16. And I do, I do a review on it. So go back and look at my review, Jason, if you have a chance. Uh, I sit down with it and go through the whole motions with it. Um, and I enjoyed it. I, I, the reason I picked it up was as I heard it might be a little better than the 18, but don't quote me on that. It's been a while since I've tasted it. Never had the 18. Can't compare it personally. But I picked it up because of the price and because of uh, just the, the fact that it was, you know, out there but not out there as much anymore in something to uh kind of sweet spot 14 is a little young in my taste 18 is preferable but sometimes the price point is just not very <sighs> attainable so 
I think uh, 16 was a good sweat. The thought that 16 was limited at least on the road to 18. It could have been. Um, they, 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 it might have been a one-off, unfortunately. Um, I was lucky enough to find it at a store. And, uh, yeah, if they were just trying to get some good juice out there that was older than their 14 but not old enough to be an 18, it might have been when I did it. Uh, pretty tasty. Uh, I still have a little bit left. Uh, I, I poured it into a smaller bottle, so I didn't lose, you know, didn't get too much oxidation going on. And um, hey, whiskey, hey, it's good to see you, man. And sitting here with the Pete Fairy Ten Year Blend from SMWS, gonna give it a taste. Went through the color and the. Uh, More Isla on the nose than space side, but you do get some space side notes in there. You gotta dig for the fruit though. It's definitely more peat forward. Even if it's a light peat, the peat's enough to kind of unfortunately mask somewhat of the fruit, but It's there. You get more of the wood, more of the green, more of that from the nose, though, than anything else. There's some spice in there. The fruit, I'm having a, a tough time discerning what exactly, other than your typical white grapes and maybe some pear, white pepper in there. Huh. Favorite aspect, though, is the meaty peat, yet light, but still enough there to be smoky. Lagavulin slash Ardbegian, so. Huh. Hmm. Nice smoke. You know what? I might have to go back on the Kalila thing. I might I might have to go back and say this might be a Kalila after all. It's the smoke that gets you. Kalila has this uncanny ability to use a little peat, but dose you with smoke. Hmm. Portisag, that kind of thing. Glen Drank Travel Retail is 12, 40, or 15th bad strength. Yeah, that's the one that I got was the uh, – I agree wholeheartedly with Hoagie on the, uh, the Glen Grant 15 bad strength. Um, that's the one I picked up. And I am – I tore through that bottle even though it is a one liter. I tore through that sucker in like a couple days. <laughs> it's a good one. That is tasty. Uh, I think it's a space side, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, finding the space side distillery in this is going to be, I think, very tough because it's the, the, the Kalila smoke aspect is, is there. Surprisingly, on the nose, it's meatier. Um, the palate is more smoky. It's good. It's easy and neat drinking for 50%. It's pretty perfect. I wouldn't touch it with water. It could maybe handle a couple drops if you really wanted to go there. But there's so many notes. There's so much chocolate, cream, smoke, bonfire, meat. Hmm. I, I, I take it back about the the Lagavulin slash Ardbegian thing. This is this is definitely Kalila. I'm thinking it's a it's a, a nice Kalila tin blended with wow, what space side did they use for this? Something that's not very well fruit forward. Let me let me take a good look here. So we're gonna go with Kalila for the Isla. Could be portisag, same thing really. Um, now, space side distilleries. Unfortunately, there are a boatload. 
and I mean a boatload. So even looking at a list, it's not going to be easy for me to, to, to tell you which one. But if I look at them, I bet you I can pull it out. I can definitely tell you what I, I, I don't think it is e easier than anything else. It's not an Apple Hour. Balandalach, uh, I'm not really familiar enough with to say yes or no on that one. I don't think it's been Romic, um, unless they uses, used some of the peated aspects of a space side, but why would you do that? Why in the world would you bother to use an Isla P with a space side and use something peated? It doesn't make any sense. So I don't think Ben Romic would even want to be involved with this, uh, this thing. Cardu, I, I don't think so. Cragenmore, it's it's a little fruitier. I don't think it's Cragmore. Now, Kregaliki, it could be a Kregaliki because it does have the more herbal, grainy, woody notes to it. And Kregalikis usually tend to hit that spot. So... It could be a Kalila Kregeliki type of hybrid. That would be interesting. And if it's not, it'd be a good idea to try. If you've got a, old, a young Kalila, preferably a 12 or a 10 or an 8 at the youngest, and you have a Kregeliki uh, 13, and if you have the 21, what the hell? Give it a try. I think if you are careful with your blending, typically when you use an Isla, you don't want to use a whole boatload of it because it doesn't take much to overpower. 70-30 is the ratio I would probably try first. So pour 70% of your Glencairn with the Kregeliki 13 or 21. Take your pick on the year, depending on your own price point, and then pick a Kalila 8, 10, 12, uh, 30%. Try that and let me know if you think it, it works. That's how I've studied it in, in you know, think it makes sense. Um, some of the great blends I've, I've been lucky enough to try, No Name's a good one by Compass Box. They use 70, I think 30, 30% uh, I think, I think that one's kind of reversed. They're going for more of the peat. So I think there's a 70% like Ardbeg and Kalila, 30% like your your thickeners, like your Klein Leashes and Dalluanes, things like that. Um, so maybe I should flip it. I, I, it, I don't have I don't have any uh, Kregeliki, I think, left of the 13, unfortunately. I, I think I... Tasted all of that one. If I still had enough, I would love to try the 13 with the Kalila 12, play around with those 70-30 ratios, either more peat forward, less peat forward, and see what made sense. 76 Ardbeg, 11 Kalila, and the no name. Yeah. 76% Ardbeg, Kalila, 11%. Yeah, that makes, yeah, they're going for more of a head. This is not that. This is not the heavily. If you're going for like more lightly peated thing, if you did like 70% Kalila, 30% Kregeliki 13 or 21, something older, I think that would, I hate to blend a 23-year-old whiskey. That's why I'm thinking Kregeliki 13 is probably a smarter pick. Um, the only bad thing about not picking an older base is um well it's going to be delicate too you don't want it to be too delicate because if it's too delicate it'll be overtaken by the kalila so i'm thinking a 13 kregeliki and a, and a 10 or 12 kalila would be a good try just to see what it's like um but you know Let's move on because there's more distilleries besides Kregeliki that it could be maybe. Uh, Glen Grant is more fruit. I don't think it's that. Glen Mora um, is a little, I don't know, just doesn't seem like it would be. Uh, Glen uh is uh, also a little fruitier. I don't think it would be the right one. Glen Farkless is a little more sulfuric. They have a little more funk going on typically. I don't think it would be Glen Farkless. 
Glenn Fittick, it could be. Uh, I don't think you see them turn up though in a lot of these blends. Um, and you need a you need a thickener. You need like a good base. Usually Klein Leash, Dadoane, or um, something like that. A little to get the mouth coat is what you're shooting for with the when you're blending something like that. That's what I would go for. Um, hey, Trooper Henry, how's Louisiana? I keep my oil safe. <laughs> Good to see you, man. I was chatting about what distillery I think is in the Pete Ferry 10 here. It's a blend from uh, SMWS. I'm pretty damn sure it's Kalila from, well, the nose, I thought, Ardbeg slash Lago Volin, but it switched on me in the palate. was so nicely smoked in Port Eskian, Esagian, I should say. Um, uh, that, um, I had to switch to Kalila. So, so far I'm going down to distilleries of, uh, space side to figure out what space side distillery did they blend with this Kalila. So far I'm thinking Gregelicky, but I'm probably off. Um, could be Glyphitic, but I don't think it is. Uh, Strathisla, Strathisla, I'm not sure how you say it. I, I wasn't a big fan of, of uh, independent bottling I had of theirs. I'd love to try a distillery version, but I've heard it's one of those that you usually get in blends. Could be doubtful. Uh, Tandu is great distillery. I don't think they would bother trying to blend it with anything. Glenlivet, same thing. Great distillery. Uh, you don't see them in a lot of blends. And McAllen, you don't really um, see them you know, being blended. Uh, but Kregelicki, you don't really see a lot out there but could be that can't be all the space sides i think i'm missing some especially newer ones let me go back and see if i can get a better list here we go yeah i missed a lot uh Abelar, no altavania i don't think so uh othrosk uh, singleton i don't think so altmore could be i have had an altmore it is kind of a grainier, is, does well with blends. Ultharosk is a little more fruity. Balmanac, Balvany, more fruity. Benryak, more fruity. Benrenis, uh, don't think so. Benromic, no. Bravel, no. Capradonic, no. Cardu, no. Colburn, no. Colgamore, no. Cragamore, no. Gregelicky, I still think, is probably the one. Dalyuane could be, too. Now, Dalyuane is, is one of those that does really well with blends because, like Kleinleash, it has that thickener agent going on to it. Um, and uh, is, since Kleinleash, I think, is a high, highland, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see. I cannot remember. It's it's uh, hard to memorize all these since there's so many distilleries. So let's make sure that we're not messing up there. Uh, yeah, Northern Highlands. So Kleinleash is not it, but it does well with blends. Duff Town's a newer one. Glen Elgin. Don't think so. Could be Glen Grant, no. Glen Keith, no. Glen Mora, no. Glen Rothes, no. Glen Spay, no. Glen Alakey, I don't think. Glen Burgey, I don't believe so. Um, Glen Doolin, not enough sulfuric properties, I think. Uh, Glen Farkas, same thing. Glen Fittick, possible, but doubtful. Glen Lassie, I don't... No one want to know with what they use for a lot of these. Like, the Mort, like Mortlock is a little too savory, I think, to be it. Milton Duff, you don't see. Pity Vac, they wouldn't bother using because that's a that's that's a, a brought back recently distillery that's very expensive. I doubt Spayburn. There is a Spayburn distillery in Speyside. Don't think it's Strathmill or Tamnavolin or Tamantul or Tormor. That's pretty much all of them. If I had to take a guess, I'm thinking let's. I mean, just going by basic distillery taste, independent bottlings. I, I don't have enough uh, broad space side knowledge to pinpoint, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's Craig Gregelicky, especially from the, the white peppery nose. That's why I thought Gregelicky. I think Gregelicky. And it to be a 10, that 
I mean, more a taste and the more I, uh, I'm getting into it. I think I'm going to put my money on a 10-year Kalila with a 10-year Kregelaki. Uh, ben, let me know if I'm right. I'm just curious. If you can't tell me publicly, send me an email if you don't mind to let me know if I'm way off or if um, if, if, if it's uh, – if it's dead on, I, I, I got to know if I'm right or not, just just because uh, it's fun to pinpoint which distilleries are and what blends and stuff, if you can do it. Um, this is so good. I'm going to pour me some more of that. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a, I think it's a good glass. I'm not a blend guy by any means. I don't, I don't collect compass box. If I did collect blends, I would collect compass box. Um. Being well versed with a lot of compass box offerings, and I have had let's go ahead and pour this whole thing, might as well, right? It's Saturday. <laughs> Cheers to you guys, Slanch of all, too. Uh, we'll, we'll keep going. I don't have a curfew. <laughs> um, pour the rest of that nice little sample there. Great color for a solid 10 year, I like it. And uh, if this is like all their others, which I'm fairly certain it is, there's no coloring or um, chill filtering or any of that nonsense going on. Pretty, pretty damn certain. Hmm. Have you had the Tobias and the Angels yet? No, I have not. I did have somebody. I haven't seen them in a while. I think it was Christopher. David, I think, what was his name? I can't remember his name. I think it was Christopher David, though, or Christopher Dave or something like that. He was interested in trading some Saul Sucks. I have the Ardbeg Stellar Release, which is the very first one of Supernova, um, back in 2008, I think it was. And I still have a, almost a whole bottle. And he wanted to try it. And he, I think, offered up a, a sample of the um, Tobias and the Angel, um, but I haven't heard from him. I asked him twice to email me um, so we could sort something out, but he never has. So uh, I'd love to try it. Now, that's one of those bottles that's extremely expensive, I've, I've heard, and extremely limited. I, have, I do have a couple of friends that snagged a bottle um, I'm pretty sure Mr. Lee Aquaman, as we like to call him, I think he's got a bottle. Prady, I'm sure, has a bottle. Uh, Generous Paul, uh, he does Dapper Drams, by the way, uh, a new show you should check out if you haven't already. Um, i got to sit down and watch some of his shows. I, I've, I've been really uh, not, uh, not into uh, not being able to, to watch a lot of shows. But if I am going to sit down and watch a show, I'm probably going to watch Paul's more so than anybody else's because Paul actually knows what he's doing when it comes to tasting notes. He is by far, even of the solid group of five that or six now that we have in our uh, salsa tasting group, um, out of Aquaman, Prene, Scott, um, I think I think Paul has the best palate slash. Uh, sniffer <laughs> than, than anybody that I know and that could, I mean he could dig the notes out of a piece of uh, a cow patty basically <laughs> he, could, he could dig out some pleasant notes somehow from it now with that said is that always a good thing you got to take that into a consideration when he's giving you a score so he might score something a little higher um than most because he can get pleasantries out of things that you normally would think are bad. So you get an idea maybe more so what's in the juice, but you got to take that into account. His scores might, if you give something a four out of five, you might only give it a three out of five. If he gives it a five out of five, you might only give it a four out of five, that kind of thing. But I think he's uh, damn good at what he does. So uh, salute to, to Paul and uh, hope you're doing well out there, my friend, if you're watching. Uh, I know that they get a chance to watch. They don't always comment, but they get a chance to watch uh, after the fact usually. Looks like uh, 
DHS liked it, but didn't like the $500. You had to pay for it. Yeah, that's 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 the killer on some of these limited deals, man. It's like for five hundred dollars, it better taste like angels, like just cried into a big vial and let me drink it. It better be like it better be damn good for that kind of money. Um, but yeah, I, I I got lucky when I found my supernova. I didn't pay five hundred dollars for it, but I know it's it's going for those kind of prices nowadays. Um, but I would definitely trade a, a sample of um, the stellar first release of the Ardbeg for it. So if you have any left, that's a, a that's an option. <laughs> oh man! But with that said, I'm enjoying this, and um, and this this uh, goes to show SMWS I think has a good tenure blend that holds its own any to anything that uh, compass box is doing yeah i am on uh, facebook as uh, text telex the whiskey tech uh their hoagie so uh i'll send you my email address uh from my uh facebook account and uh, actually i still have some email that i've, I've talked with you uh, before about so i'll just i'll just respond to an old uh email i've got and see you around, Hoagie. You have a wonderful day there in Germany as well. Yeah, it's still uh, only 4.30 here, so it's early. <laughs> but, yeah, I think they did a good job with this. Uh, I'd love to see an older, more ABV version of it. If they do a 12 or a 15 at 55%, that would be that would be hella good. If they had a Kalila 15 with like a Gelicky, 13 or whatever, you know, 15, whatever they, they can get their hands on. I think that would be pretty damn special. I got it now. See, now I got to play around and see if I can mimic this somehow. I'm wondering if I got a, a nice uh, blend of a Kalila 10 or 12 with the Kregeliki 13 ish. If uh, I could make some uh, something similar. <laughs> Still great smoke. Lemons come out a little bit, reminiscent of a uh, of the um, Kalila part. The Kregelikis pepper and nice like herbal esque back end is there. And you get a little bit of the olive, uh, not as definitely, thankfully, not as profound um, as a Kalila seventeen unpeated, uh, but this has a little bit of that in there. Perfect amount. Just enough to make it well versed, well you know, broad. It's it's a broad statement of, of notes on the uh, palate. Just enough to make it interesting, not too carried away. Actually, this one not having a cask influence or a uh, sherry casking is not a big deal. This, I think it's a good enough blend where it doesn't need it. Now, what's the price point on this? Um, that is the next, is it worth it kind of thing. Let's see what the prices are going for now. I usually have to lose uh, Wine Searcher for that. WineSearcher.com. Let's just look for a Pete. F-A-E. R-I-E, I believe. 80 bucks to a hundred dollars New Zealand I guess is probably New Zealand money there is the 80 so skip that <laughs> Wow there's only a couple spots that have it oh and it's sold out Wow they must have sold it really fast uh, UK had it for about a hundred bucks um, if you can still find it uh, for a hundred dollars I think it's 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 well worth it if you have to pay a premium for it, what would you spend? That's the that's the catch now. Um, hmm. I definitely think with it being a ten-year age statement, with it having no chill filtering, no coloring, and it having a, a ABV of fifty percent, it's definitely worth a hundred bucks. Is it worth one fifty? That's where I think I would probably have to cut it off. 
I think if you went above 150 for something like this, it would be tough because of just the fact that you can get so much for $200, you know, you can get a higher age, you can get a higher ABV uh, for 120, you know, and it's not even a blend, it's an actual, you know, single malt, but it doesn't have all the aspects of a nice blend. That's what makes blends sometimes actually special. So I think 150 is where I would probably be willing to pay up to before I would cut her off and say, okay, that's, I'm done. Um, and I have to be in the mood for a first fill X bourbon barrel, you know, X first fill X bourbon barrel uh, type of cast type. That's, I, I just can't get over how meaty in Ardbegian slash Lagavulini the, the nose is, but the, the, the palate is so Kalila slash Kregelic y. <laughs> Easy sipping, though, I have to say. Easy sipping, no water needed. Um, might put a couple of drops on to see what happens. Let's see. Where did I put my dropper? There it is. I'm not used to having all this, uh, all these liquids next to my electronic equipment. I got to be extra careful. Where did I put that water? Uh, let's see. Where did I put it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> got water and glasses everywhere. So story of the week, non-whiskey. Anyone drooling over the <laughs> the Corvette 2020? I did see a picture of that recently, and I was like, man. Usually, I'm not a, I haven't been a Corvette fan since 1984 Stingray. If that tells you something. Um, but that one's pretty badass looking, I have to say. I was uh, somewhat impressed uh, by the uh, look of that. I'm sure the price point's way out of my. Uh, Way out of my league, but hey, whiskey Jason, good to see you. Uh, we just had Hoagie here a little bit ago. You just missed Hoagie, but uh, a fellow, uh, a fellow Germander. I'm not sure what you say, Ger Ger Germanic person, Germander. Um, he's from Berlin. Uh, what city are you from there, whiskey Jason? Just curious. And this is why I don't go by Jason. My real name, I go by Tux, because there's so many Jasons out there. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, we'll have to see how the water goes with it. It doesn't need it at all. I hope I didn't taint it, but to give it a well rounded, you know, look. Are you from uh, Berlin as well, there, Whiskey Jason, or a different city? Just curious. Physics for a CR, I'm sorry, C4ZR1 and a C6ZO. Wow. Gain a bit of appreciation for Corvettes. Yeah. That, those are codes. I don't even know the uh, models, but uh, yeah, the, the, I, I definitely appreciate that new uh, look. Just going by, not even thinking about the, uh, Undercarriage, the uh, it's pretty nice. Sixty thousand though dollars though, man, that's crazy. Oh, well, Hamburg and Denmark. Oh, good to see you. Good, nice to meet you. I know you've been here before uh, as a viewer, but it's good to get you on the live feed at least. We did a little earlier today. Uh, I had to miss my last uh, Tuesday night um, meeting because I'm having some construction done back here. That's why the camera angle is way over this way, but. Uh, Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do if you want to have a show and have a drink. <laughs> but nice to see you. Uh, what are you drinking tonight, Whiskey Jason? Just just uh, curious. We're doing the Pete Ferry 10-year blend uh, from SMWS here. Uh, and other folks are having a little bit of uh, other things. Let him know what you're having too, uh, guys, if you don't mind. But yeah, I think it's Kalila, and I think it's Kregeliki. That, that's that's what I'm going to have to stick with, I think, on this one. A very nice blend, If it's even if it's not Kalila and Kregeliki, like I suspect. Um, if it's, I think it was just, is it two or more? 
I mean, it's hand selected casks from first fill space sides and the Islas, but would they really have bothered going with multiple distilleries? I'm thinking they probably would have stuck it. Oh, you're a lucky bastard. You got the Dark Storm Trooper. I love the storm. I really love the Dark Storm. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's a hard to find one. That's one of those travel retails, I believe, too. Nothing in my glass at the moment. We usually have a problem with the seven to six hour time difference. Yeah, it's it's a tough one. Tell a glass of ice water. Yeah, it's so hot outside. If if I had to spend any more time outside, I definitely wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be drinking alcohol, but I'm in the air conditioning now and enjoying it. So I know a shop with Darkstorm that ships to the US. Please send me an email to telex at outlook.com if you don't mind, Jason. I appreciate it. Because uh, that is a bottle that I do not have. I have a storm and I have the 10, the 18, and the distiller's edition. But I do not have my own dark storm bottle. But he got it in Brazil for 76 bucks. Wow, man. I need some extra whiskey buddies. <laughs> Because you guys have all these friends that have these great deals. Like DHS has that guy that found the Art Big 21 for like $234, which is crazy. Um, Trooper's got a buddy that's getting the Dark Storm for 76 bucks. It's like, I need some more whiskey friends. <laughs> oh, it's hard to find. But that's a, that's a hell of a deal, man. Because I think the, hell, the, the Stiller's Edition, the regular is like 82 around here. Uh, finding a dark storm is uh, not an easy thing to do, if unless you're at Heathrow, probably. Mm. I'd say it's a solid buy. The Peat Fairy, 10-year, no chill filtering, no coloring, 50% ABV. I suspect it's Kalila, Kigalaki. I could be wrong. Ben, hopefully, will uh, correct me on the actual Space Side Isla casts they selected for this. If not, hopefully he'll give me a hint if I'm wrong. <laughs> but uh, I think it's definitely worth it your while. If you find it for 100 to 150 is where I would cut it off. So I wouldn't spend more than 150 American for it. So after market, hopefully 150 is is uh, the highest price point you have to, to go for. In detail, he got it at the travel retail in Brazil. Yeah, that's... We usually have to go, but sometimes Jason Coates is correct, and you can find um, places that will ship to the U.S., and that will ship um, the um, the travel retail stuff back over here. It's, it's glorious if you can find it. Yeah, 50 euros is 55 bucks over there uh, in, uh, in Germany, and... Uh, yeah, Dark Storm is probably pretty easy to get. J uh, Whiskey Jason, we were just talking about um, the fact that Germany is the sweet spot for buying whiskey, uh, especially Scotch whiskey, because for us, we have a problem because of the shipping issues that we have over in the United States. Our laws are so crazy that even county laws differ from one county to the next on how you can ship or distribute whiskey. Um, when it comes to um, Germany, you're far enough from Scotland where you don't have the oversaturation of people buying stuff like crazy like they do in Scotland. So Germany is like that sweet spot, just far enough away, but just close enough to be effective, to be the perfect place to buy scotch pretty much overall taxes and um all that stuff you know taking into account you're very lucky to be in germany and i trade you places any day of the week no he is uh i think he is german actually oh is he is he uh is he an american living in german that's possible i don't know i thought i thought his uh german was really well done if he is an american he speaks damn good german i'll give him credit for it <laughs> it might be right i i Oh, okay, so he's been there since 88, but an originally American. That's cool, huh? Well, the good news is you have you have been uh, Europeanized uh, to the point where I couldn't even tell because your German is, uh, is that good. He's just picked up a German accent after all these years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a very good one at that. 
Oh my! And, he, and Jay, whiskey Jason has a channel just like I do. So if you haven't already checked him out, he's and he's got a lot of content. He goes outside of uh, of Scotch. I think you do bourbons and all sorts of uh, different drinks too, Jason. If I'm not mistaken, uh, let me know. Uh, whiskey jason i think you do pretty much a little bit of everything i try to stay to scotch because it's hard enough to get uh well versed in one thing more or less all over yeah y'all's alcohol taxes are fairly low see germany's got the right idea i mean if you're going to tax stuff why alcohol for god's sakes tax something that that people shouldn't be doing like uh you know throw more gambling tax out there or something uh tax Tax cigarettes like crazy. Tax, you know, things like that. But the alcohol, let's 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 simmer down a little bit. <laughs> Rare and exotic whiskeys. Cool. Okay. Well, you're yeah, you're 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 kind of like me, but yet you kind of span out all over the place. I just try to stick to the scotch when I can. Well, tax addictive things, I guess. Yeah, good for business. Yeah, I guess that's the problem. Thank God they don't tax music like they do. I guess. Um, the uh the vices that we have music i guess is the a, a tolerable vice <laughs> tax of bias and the angels yeah. oh he took it away <laughs> tax broccoli there you go yeah if you're gonna tax something tax something i don't want to do very much <laughs> but that's the way it goes typically man i already finished out that p for i'm going to go back to back to this uh, smws akintoshin 18. very well done as well look at that color man i mean that's and that's that's uh natural sorry the focus is is take some time but uh, i do have a light shining right on this so this is a true color that you're getting from this um It's funny, and thankfully the peat fairy, even though it was a nice smoky peat, it wasn't so peated. The PPM was low enough where I don't feel saturated, where I can go back to have um, an Akintoshin, um like this and, and be fine. I think the PPM was very low on that, even though it was nice smoke and peat. If it was above 20 to 30, I'd be surprised. I think it was a lower... Uh, ppm so uh ben let me know if i'm if i'm way out on the ppm being like 20 to 30 ish i'm thinking more towards the 20s than the 30s because of um just the ability to have a, a sip of water and you know speaking of where is my water uh having a sip of water and not having um you know a lot of peak getting the way like it does usually if you have that uh, and come back to a uh, a fruit lowland slash highland slash bayside type kind of dream. Mm. I wonder how much they have left on this 5.70. It's a good bottle if you guys can get it. Uh, I, that's the only thing that's rough about doing SMWS uh, reviews of any sort is because the whiskey is there and then it's not and it doesn't take long for it to be you know all out looking over here at the uh, screen to see if i can find if they're still selling this guy i would think they would well they're regular I, it's funny because usually i go to the smws usa site i just went to their basic site this time for the first time and wow, their focus is kind of all over the place. They've got their grains in the forefront and their rum casks and mystery duos and all this crazy stuff everywhere. It's like, I just want to look at the, uh, at the uh, whiskey. And the sad thing is I am on with single cask whiskey and it still is, I guess this is some sort of uh Picking up some Nicaraguan rum cast thing. I'm just going to go back to the American site because it's a lot easier to deal with for me at least. Let's see if I can find it. SMWS, SMWS USA, I believe, right? SMWSUSA.com. Is that right? We'll find out. Hopefully I don't go to any uh, unfortunate porn sites of some sort. <laughs> at least I'm not sharing the screen. 
That didn't work. Let me try that one more time. I thought it was SMWS USA. Oh, SMWSA. SMW. Come on. One second, guys. Having some. There we go. I was having a little trouble there. All right. Now let's get to the uh, shop and see if they actually even sell this particular one. I think they do. Well, they still have. Uh, yeah, they still have the five dot seventy. One fifty five is the price point on it. But for an eighteen year old, um, Akatoshin Lowland. For what you get, it is sweet, it's fruity, it's mellow. I think it's a, a good um, description, you know, of, of the classification of what they're selling. But I really love the balance of the fruit, the nuttiness, the spice factor. Even some, like, subtle, dare I say, Maybe I'm getting residual. No, this is a fresh glass. A little slight, like a very, very minute smoke factor going on, but enough to make it a very well-rounded uh, offering. For 155 for the year, the 18 years you get, for the no you know, chill filtering or coloring or – any of those games, I think that you get a really good version of an Akatoshin. Have a lot better than just a run of the mill twelve year old that you're going to get if you buy, you know, American oak or um, a three wood or something like that. It is basically whiskey porn. It really is. I think you got a good point. Uh, it's hard to get away from them once you've once you've had like. I mean, I've been lucky enough to have a lot of different offerings from them because I had a friend that had a bunch of bottles that he was willing to let a lot of people taste. Um, other than the five or six that I've bought myself, I have never had a bad version of something. It's always been good. Now, has it always been what I'm expecting it to be from the distillery? No. The first bottle I bought for myself was the Glenlivet, which is our two dot series, a two dot, uh, one 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 to be so specific, a Glenlivet. Now, when I one of my favorite aspects of a Glenlivet is the pineapple tropical things that I usually get from their twelve or you know even their French oak and higher stuff. Um, one thing that I can depend on is that tropical aspect being there. Unfortunately, when you do leave the distillery versions excuse me, and you go to a independent offering or even, uh, I mean, I know SMWS are classified as independent bottling, but it's, it's, it's a little more specialized than that to me. But even going with this, it's like, you don't really know what you're going to get, but you do know it's going to be good. Now that's, that's the deciding factor of why I decided to switch, um, when it comes to, uh, trying different, uh, distilleries even, is even though it might not be the exact uh, taste profile that I'm expecting from that distillery, I still know it's going to be decent if I get it through these guys. So the funny thing is the new one they have for Glenlivet is a 112 they've got. They're selling. I haven't had it yet. It's a spicy and sweet. I already had a spicy and sweet version from a, a Dalmore. Uh, it was a... Uh, 13, I think, 15 or 13 recently. Uh, I'm not sure. I think they sold out of that one already. Um, I'm looking to see if they still have it. It might be that 28.41. I can't remember if that's the same one, though. They've got so many. And I wish they put the name of the distillery up there. I know they're doing it because they don't want you to be like um, – they don't want you to be influenced by the distillery name, but 
since you put the number up there, you might as well tell me what it is. <laughs> it make it a lot easier in discerning which one's which. But Jason thinks uh, similar that he's had a, tele a terrible Kragenmore from them, uh, but that's the exception. Yeah. And the thing I think is, was it terrible in a sense of terrible that the 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 tasting notes weren't what you wanted or was it terrible in a sense of a, an actual bad whiskey and i think that is something to take into account too because there have been in, is situations where i think i've had a a good whiskey but the tasting notes were not anything that I was looking for at all. I think that Kalila 17 and Pete is a good example of that where I can appreciate it for being, you know, Kalila puts out a good whiskey, but all the tasty notes I got from that were nothing of what I was looking for. I didn't want white pepper and olives and black pepper and uh, extra salt and dryness. And, you know, some people might love that. They might listen to me just give you those, those, uh, factors and they might think well that sounds actually damn good but to me it doesn't sound good at all so it's uh in my opinion it was objectively immature really soapy now, i'm not that kind of drinker that has a set profile preference a lot of different than unexpected okay well then it probably was a bad just a bad um either a bad bottling or a bad um cask of some sort that just got unfortunately released soapiness is one of those that i never like um and and i'll i'll be honest with you there are some bottles out there that are extra soapy that i get now thankfully i don't get that note very often but i will tell you a few bottles that i get that all day long when some people like it uh the local lomond 12 the basic local woman 12, I thought was extremely soapy tasting. I did not like it at all. Some people love it and, and might not even get a soapiness factor, but uh, I just I just couldn't handle it. Um, ironically, and you talk about the strong soapiness being a, a flaw from a you know indicating an immature spirit. I got a ton of soap of all things, an old pulpney new. I think, and I'm trying to remember if it was the 25 or the 35. It was one of the two, and I'm leaning towards the 35, believe it or not, because I was so surprised that an old whiskey would have a soapiness factor to it. Um, it could have been the 25, though, and the 35 being better. But one, one of the two, they had some really off-the-wall soapy notes to it that I just was like – Either something's wrong with my glass or something's wrong with this whiskey. Because <laughs> I love the 17. I love the 21. I even love the new 15. Not so much on the new 18, but that's just me. Um, did not like the uh, 25 or 35. And I'm thinking it was a 35. But hopefully it was just a bad glass slash bottle or something. But... Those are the two for as far as soapiness factors that that popped up in my head. Where as soon as you said that, the local woman twelve was definitely the only one that was a twelve year old that I remember getting a lot of soapy aspects from it. But maybe that is because it is only a twelve. I do love the local woman eighteen inch Murin. Did a show for that one. That is exceptionally good and peaty and tasty for not being an Isla Pete. So. I feel a lot of tasting notes I read don't really give me much uh, context. Uh, that's why I like reviews online where you get person's notes and feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes uh, just the notes themselves are kind of hard to digest because, you know, if I say soapiness, most people probably take that as a negative, but some people might like it. I don't know, but this was the 13 almost clear. Definitely need a tired, uh, definitely a tired cask. Yeah, a thirteen Kragenmore. Huh. I've, I've had, I have not had a good Kragenmore that I really fell in love with yet. Uh, I will admit, I've had the Kragenmore Distillers Edition, and I was kind of excited because it was a port cask type. It's okay. It does have some nice fruity notes to it. But with that said, 
it wasn't my favorite whiskey uh, by any means, uh, not even close. Um, so I'm looking for a Kraken more I can sink my teeth into. Hopefully the one I do pick from SMWS will be good. If it is, either way, I'll let you guys know what I think of it. Um, and some distilleries, you know, they might not just be able to put out a decent juice. I, I know that Avendurg, I'm still looking for a good, uh, they're a new to, newer distillery. Avendurg, I'm trying to find a good one from them. I've only had their inaugural it was horrible. They have a 10-year-old I'd like to try, uh, but they're charging some astronomically high price for it. That I'm just like, I'll wait for a tasting or sample or something. DHS says, uh, so tasting notes from Caden had much bigger than the notes suggest. Smoky but not peaty. Smoked olives with a hint of animal foliage. Huh. Is this the um, Caden? Is that the uh, Caden head? Um, is this a uh, Cragenmore from Caden head? What, what, uh, which uh, distillery is it? I'm just curious. And what year? Yeah, I can notice this Akatoshin uh, 18 pretty much all day. It's a, it's a nice blend. Well, not blend, but blend of flavor. Mm. And it's so tasty neat. I don't really, you know, it can handle a couple of drops of water, but... As long as you don't put more than a couple of drops, like I made the mistake of putting a, like a teaspoon in it, way too much water. But perfect, neat, um, really well done finish, long, for Lowland especially. But like I said, don't knock the Lowlands. Bl the Bladnock is an excellent distillery in Lowland that uh, I can't wait to give a try for an SMWS bottle. I'm going to talk to Ben and see what he recommends for a blood knock. I'm sure they have at least one that I get my hands on that's uh, tasty. I'm glad I didn't read that before buying it. I have no idea what that means. The so, Buna have an 11 year old. I get none of that. Yeah. Yeah. Most official tasting notes are nonsense. Uh, I'll agree to an, you know, to, to an extent, I think the problem with a lot of these guys it's like I try to find that sweet spot. I think there's certain guys that don't do enough. Well, they'll they'll take it on the nose. Their notes will be like, I get uh, some fruit, some pepper, uh, spice, and some vanilla, and that is the extent of their nosy notes. And then palate, they'll say I get something similar, like I get uh, fruit, smoke, and um, some grasses. That's it. They don't, they don't give you anything else. And then, on the other hand, though, you get these notes from these guys that, like the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, uh, I'm not, not knocking them, but most people are not going to be able to get this out of it. And I'm just going to read you what's on this one. Aged Riesling Wine. Now, I, this word, I do not know. I do know it's a spirit of some sort. Armanach. Uh, I believe it's like cognac, but Armanek, Armanek, or Magnic. Someone tell me how to pronounce that. Uh, in Calvados, joined roasted chestnuts, apples, and figs with cinnamon sticks, previously in an ex bourbon hogshead. So I do get the apples and the figs and the cinnamon because I talked about some of the mid level fruits that I got and the figs and cinnamon. Uh, I did get the nutty aspects of the, the roasted chestnuts and stuff. But aged Riesling wine and this Armin, Arminach uh, and Calvados, I don't even know what the hell that is. <laughs> Armagnac. Okay, Armagnac. Cognac. Armagnac. Makes sense. Armagnac. Okay, thanks, DHS. I appreciate it. I have seen that recently. It's like there's just like this all of a sudden everyone's getting on this Armagnac kick. Uh, not just like, I mean, it's uh, a lot of um, all these uh, distilleries are even doing this, these Armagnac uh, cask offerings and stuff. I'm like, where did this come from? But whatever. Um, Call this is an apple pear brandy. Okay, cool. Apple brandy. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, hmm. But yeah, I mean, I, I agree with these tasting notes. When you get that. When you get too broad and you 
And if you are the type like Paul that can pick the note out of every single thing, and uh, sorry, I put the bottle back. Back, I'm getting construction back here is making it tough to do a show, but I'm making do. Um, when you have, when you're too good at putting the notes out there, it's almost like a song that's too complex for most people. That's too. I mean. I love progressive rock and progressive metal and progressive jazz and things like that. I can appreciate when you throw me an F major seventh and you throw me a, a G minor nine and you give me, uh, you know, some crazy um, score that's got a key, a key change and a, and a time signature change every other measure from seven eighths to six eighths and, and you're grooving and all that. I can appreciate all that. I know music just like I know whiskey, but most people, aren't going to know any of that shit. <laughs> it's like, you know, I love the nuances between listening to King Crimson and yes. And, 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 and that's great music to me, but most people are going to listen to it and be like, I don't even know what you just said, you know? So with that said, these tasty notes, you got to find that sweet spot of finding, okay, complex enough to actually mean something, but, not so complex enough where the run of the mill to an advanced person can appreciate what you're saying. So Jason says he has one SMWS Omnock. Huh. Would like to explore more of it. DHS says uh, Omnock is on my radar for sure. Yeah. It's like the new, the new go-to thing I've noticed. Huh. I never even tried one. If it tastes like this, I like it though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but if it tastes like this, it's on my radar too because I'm, I'm sipping it up. Um, this was a really good buy for 155 I have to say. I mean, for 18-year-old whiskey at cast strength, no chill filtering and, and no coloring, um, that's why I was like, where do I sign? I, I mean, I hate spending for you know shipping slash membership fees and crap. But with that said... If it's a once a year thing for the membership and if it's, you know, if I get a couple bottles for what I would spend on gas going out to most places that are that have this kind of caliber whiskey, then it actually makes up for it. DHS says, well, if you can get a spirit similar enough to Scotch bourbon that's 40 years old and 150 bucks. Yeah, that's tough to do, man. That's really, really, really that's really, really tough to do. 40 years old, man. They just, I guess the problem is it hasn't been saturated yet. As soon as you get everyone on that bandwagon of the Armagnac, you're going to see that 40 uh, years old and 150 bucks going to like 350 to $400. <laughs> just a matter of time. You know how the whiskey uh, thing went. It was nothing for a Bunnahaven, you know, 18 was like 100 bucks. Now you can't touch it. Look at it for one fifty or or more. Same with um, a lot of these things. Take it them on the bandwagon. They'll keep Scotch bourbon from going higher. That's true. Now that's the good thing. Now, yeah, if, if since it's not, not something I personally get into, I'm hoping that uh, rum and gin and Armagnac and uh, Calvados and all these crazy things. I hope that. Uh, People go gravitate towards those for a while, so my whiskey prices do go down. That would be nice. I could I could definitely get behind that any day. Mm. Well done. I'm not sure if you picked this cask, Ben. You probably didn't, but whoever picked this Akatoshin cask, very well done. I will admit my first reaction, though, was not positive. I think not only did I not give it enough time and oxidation even though i poured it the neck pour i don't think did it justice once i got past the neck pour and once i made sure i did not over water it i just give a couple of drops if i do add any water at all to it the 5.70 18 year old at 155 i think is um i think a a, a good solid deal pretty perfect I wouldn't really change anything about it. It's got the year, it's got the color, it's got the chill filter, no chill filter. It's got you know the uh, 
a lowland distillery is a hard thing to to kind of gather my head around being this great um goes to show it's all about the cask it's not necessarily about you know always where and who it's from it's a matter of getting the right one from the right distillery um Jason says, if I hadn't found that 79 gram Farkless, I probably would have res resorted to an Armanac for my 40th birthday bottle. So much more affordable. Yeah. Wow, man. 79 gram Farkless, that sounds damn good. It was one of those family casks that you got. I haven't tried one of those. Uh, I have been lucky enough to have the 105, the uh, 25. The 17 I have on the shelf back here, it's all gone because I love that bottle. Uh, I do like a Glen Farkless, man. I do like them a lot. They kind of have that Ben Nevisy, uh, you know, Ben Nevisy sulfuric, but yet still damn tasty aspect to them. Uh, family cast, cool. Jason Coates, do you get any sulfuric nice uh, funkiness to the family cast so, as well? I've never luckily had uh, been lucky enough to have one, but is it like the 2517 kind of juice, just better? Big direct fired stills, man. Sounds good to me. Um, is it like their other juice though that has that slight little funky factor that gives it kind of an edge on other distilleries? Because I'll, I'll be honest with you, if I have my cho my choice between Glen Goyne and the Glen Farkless, I'm gonna go for the Glen Farkless just because I like it better. It's a little little thick. You don't get the sulfur on Glen Farkless. I'm surprised. I get it all day long on every Glen Farkless I've had, but I like it. I like sulfuric stuff to an extent like a Ben Nevis or a Glen Turret uh, that I've had the independent bottling of it. Uh, ben Nevis uh, distillery bottle had it. Uh, some McKellens have it, not as much to me. I know Mark Broda gets a lot of uh, sulfuric stuff on McKellens. I don't usually get it off of McKellen, but uh, hmm. The 79s are a bit odd. They were super poor back then and ended up filling lots of really used casks. Huh. Well, it's sad to be poor, but it's really cool that you have a really old, uh, you know, fill. So these 79s are like fourth fill. <laughs> Is it still good? I would think it's still pretty tasty, even at a fourth fill, but that sucks that it's, you know, past the uh, second or third fill, which is amazing after four decades. Yeah, hell yeah. Is it still tasty? I'm just curious if you still like it. Um, I think my friend KB, um, I think he has some other uh, family casks sitting. I'm not sure if he's opened one yet, but uh, I had my eye on him when I, when I was visiting him. I saw them from a distance. I was like, KB, I'd love to taste one of those, but I didn't say anything to him. Uh, he was very, very, uh, he was, <laughs> not to say he wasn't very uh, giving, man. He, we, we had a lot of Deanston's. Oh man, we had a lot of um, we had a solstice from Ben Rock. We had um, a hell of a lot of SMWS bottles. We had everything else besides the Glen Farkless. But of all the things he had that I didn't touch that stood out from memory, he had some family cast bottles that I have to say I'm gonna have to uh, maybe talk him into opening at some point. You, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> At 40 years old, man, maybe more reuse is needed. Yeah. Yeah, along with maturation, entire cast is magical still. Yeah. Whiskey Jason says most of the Glen Farkless family casks are good. Not always cheap, but good whiskey. Yeah, that's the thing when you get to those family casks. Uh, I glimpse the price point on them. I'm like, oh my God. But that's just like when you get to the black art stuff from Book Lottie and you get to the uh, fire and ice from Highland Park, you start getting to these crazy numbers. It's like, good luck. <laughs> There's no way. I mean, thankfully, I've tasted the Highland Park fire and ice because of, of generous, generous donors. Uh, Aquaman, I love you, man. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. I know you're working your ass off in Virginia. Um, that fire and ice was tasty, but is it worth 300 bucks, man? I don't know, man. 15 year and 17 year stuff. It's tasty. It's good. 
But I would slap a two to two fifty on it, not a three hundred deal, man. That's just a little nuts to me. But it's, it's still for the dark and the light. I mean, they're great whiskeys, but man, once you get past that three hundred dollar price point, that's when I had to draw the line on seventeen, fifteen year old whiskey. It's just, oh man. I guess it's a specialized cast is what you're paying for. I, I can't fathom what else it would be. Six hundred thirty. Uh, eight dollars after exchange rate yeah that's that's ultra high in there to me i just think the oh man but if i was looking for a specialized bottle i would that wouldn't be far from my eye man when those family casks i better damn good mm. tasty tasty well, I appreciate y'all hanging out with me uh, this afternoon. It's been it's been glorious, uh, better than expected. Um, I appreciate y'all hanging out, uh, especially when it's not the typical time zone. But I'm glad I did it because I I wouldn't normally uh, been able to get Whiskey Jason on. And uh, Whiskey Jason, if you're up for it, I'm not sure how good your English is. Um, my German sucks. My wife speaks it, but. I, 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 she, she can definitely understand most, but I, I, I don't have any uh, German skills at all. But if your English is decent, I wouldn't mind having you on for a show maybe to discuss some whiskeys uh, if you're up for it. I know you're American, but I'm not sure. I, I just didn't know since you've been there since 1988. That's, that has been a few years. <laughs> if, you, if you still get to use your English enough. Uh, but if you do... I, I'd, I'd be happy to do a show with you at some point if you're up for it. Oh, you teach English for a living. Well, never mind. <laughs> well, even better. Your English is better than mine then. <laughs> never mind. Well, if you're up for it, if we can uh, send me an email, telex at outlook.com sometime. Maybe we can uh, arrange a live show, uh, a hangout, if you're up for it. Uh, we could pick a whiskey or pick a distillery. It doesn't have to be the same whiskey, um, or two for that matter, um, and just talk about the distillery, what we like about it, what we don't like, uh, what we're looking for, what we look for the distillery to do in the future. We can we can go all over and on tangents too. Uh, as you can tell, I don't really. This is just a haul for fun. I'm not I'm not uh, uh, have a set agenda or anything like that. So <clears throat> if you're up for it, I'd be uh, happy to. Uh, to try it out if you want let me know uh via email if you have a chance uh, other than that it's been a, a good deal and i appreciate y'all stopping by and uh hopefully ben will let me know if the kalila slash kregeliki blend is uh okay cool no problem at all we'll we'll make something we'll, we'll figure out something even if it's not for my regular tuesday night at uh nine show if it's if that's a little too late for you we can always you know i'm not a stickler for time i can always you know go a little earlier luckily i get to telework during the week on wednesdays and fridays i'm off every other friday so like today i mean yesterday so i still think is i wish it was friday still i guess uh but no we can we can definitely uh do it same kind of time here or or even earlier for you uh so it makes sense because yeah i don't want you to be up at 3 a.m for any reason <laughs> unless you want to be kind of thing we'll sort out something and that goes for anybody else that wants to uh have a little discussion and if you can't do a live video thing i understand we'll just do a, a text here on the uh, chat channel and uh comment give me a thumbs up if you don't mind if you enjoyed your time and you can even give me a thumbs down if you didn't enjoy your time i, I don't mind either way Everything is good. I'm an Eastern time for me, um, but uh, we'll definitely do it whatever time's good for you. Fred Hansen says he's dropping by in a little late, but we'll enjoy the rest of the show with a Glengarry 18 single sherry. Wow, bottle by Defi. That does sound damn good. I have had a Glengarry. I'm trying to remember what year it was, or did I have one yet? I think I had a 12. 18 single sherry cast sounds a hell of a lot better if you know what I mean. So I definitely would uh, take that. Hey, Fred, are you from uh, Norway by chance? Or are you American? I can't remember. I think you might be Norwegian. 
I was about to turn it off, but I might keep it up for you a little bit longer. <laughs> Jason loves our basic 12. Yeah, I did, I did like it. I did like the 12. Uh, it definitely was a hell of a lot better than most 12s you get from, from a lot of distilleries. And I'm looking at you, Cardu. <laughs> but uh, um, I thought I was really some great whiskey. Yeah, that's one of those uh, independent bottlings that I have never – Unfortunately, sadly, I've never had a chance to try an Adelpha. Um, but it's on my radar because I've always heard they're pretty consistently good. I have had a lot of signatories and a lot of uh, Gordon McPhail's and uh, a lot of Compass Boxes, uh, not, uh, not independent, but um, uh, Alexander Murray's, other good independent uh, bottlings. But uh, Adelpha is one that I've heard of. I never see them around much anytime. He says they're always on the expensive end, but here they're worth it. You know what? I'm going to pour another dram. What the hell? I don't have a curfew. <laughs> Whoa. Gotta be careful back here. It's a construction zone, as you can tell back in the back. Oh, from Norway, Tak for Shisht. <laughs> Good to see you. Veldigbro. Is that how you say it? Veldigbro. Veldigbro. Very good. Veldigbro, I think is how you say it. I, can't. I get my Norwegian and Swedish mixed up, too, so you have to forgive me. Kan du snakke norske svenske alt elite, but that's very very little. <laughs> that's probably I'm probably butchering the pronunciation because I've never heard a Norwegian actually speak it. I'm just going from phonetics that I try to study a little bit on the side. <laughs> yeah, talk for schist Veldegra. Yeah, Charles McLean is one of the experts at Adelphi. Okay, Charles McLean. That name sounds familiar. Stone Brewing. It's not expensive. You're just cheap. <laughs> that ex helps explain it. Oh, man. Yeah. I had to pour a little more of this uh, SMWS. Uh, I'm sipping on the uh, Sweet, Fruity, and Mellow uh, cast number 5.70 in the absence of convention. It's 155 American for it. 18 year and Toshin knows no joke. It's actually pretty damn tasty, I have to say. Uh, Charlie picked a few SMWS casks last year, and I had a couple. Really nice. Huh. I'll have to look him up. If he's picking SMWS casks, I mean, he's got to be – he's definitely got to know what he's doing because those guys don't just let any chump come and pick casks for him, I'm sure. Uh, check out the new 2010 Kalila – Eight-year sherry cask, black as the night. That sounds damn. Man, I gotta move to fucking Europe. <laughs> I've gotta move to Europe. <laughs> this is crazy. How in the world do you find a Kalila eight-year-old sherry cask? I mean, I've never seen, heard any of that. But I would jump all over it. He has a famous mustache. Must be a Scotch guy thing. Yeah, you know, I don't have a famous one, but I, I think I do okay on the gray beard. It's 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 all natural. <laughs> Charles McLean, yeah. Hmm. I have to have to look up uh, not only the Kalila Eight Year Sherry Cast, but this uh, Charles McLean and Adelphi. Yeah, I gotta I gotta find some Adelphi stuff because I've heard too many good things about their stuff to not dig into giving their independent bottlings a try. Um, because that's one of those, just like SMWS, that you don't really hear about a lot of negativity on what they pick. And the signatory vintage stuff is like that, too. The SV um, independent bottlings are pretty damn good, usually. I had a Brora the other day from um, Codame Alpha, uh, good, great donor. Um, he sent a Port Ellen and Aurora, and I tell you what, the signatory vintage stuff is absolutely insane. Very well done. The Port Ellen was good, but the Brewer was on another level. It was by far top, th excuse me, like top two, three tastes of all time. I can see why Brewer is so well revered when it comes to most whiskey uh, tastings. Uh, tasters and the um, I, I, it's a shame that you just can't go out and get their stuff anymore. I heard that they're coming back. I'm not sure if um, 
I, I don't. Is Diageo the one that brought Brora? I know it's a client leash thing where client leash was old Brora and now they're client leash, but they're still like, I think they're someone's bringing Brora back somehow. Uh, is it Diageo that's doing that or someone else? Could someone tell me? Uh, Preston says he's never tasted a bad Adolfa. Can also recommend the Klein Leash 97 bottles. Delphi had some great ones. Cool. Yeah, Klein Leash is one of my favorite distilleries. Jason says both Port Ellen and Brewer are coming back, but it'll be a long time. Both Diageo. See, that's the only one. No offense to Diageo. I love Guinness. I love a lot of the stuff that they do. They're just so big that it's hard, I think, for them Maybe I'm mistaken. Hopefully I'm mistaken. But I'm hoping they can bring Port Ellen and Brora back to their glory. And they're not just looking at it as some sort of marketing thing. All offense to Diageo, the horrible company. <laughs> oh, I sense some Swami in you, DHS. <laughs> I sense the Swami factor coming in. No, that's cool. Diageo yeah, and I have a love-hate relationship. It's like, on one hand, I'm kind of torn because I want to. I mean, if anyone can do it and have the money and the backing to do it right, Diageo's got some pull. I mean, they got, but they have to fine tune their craft and fine tune everything that they're doing with these because these are like the stradivarius of freaking instruments they are to whiskey they you you please don't screw up brora please don't screw up port ellen those are absolutely great distilleries that have great whiskeys that are you know sadly dead and if you do bring them back please don't overprice them please don't Screw up the marketing of them, and please don't color any of their stuff. I'm I'm with DHS on that. Don't 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 screw this up, please. I beg you. That Brora that I tasted was so good. If I ever had the option of tasting it again, I would jump all over it. But if you White Walker eyes this, I will haunt you i will die and haunt you till your dying day and then i'll haunt you after death too <laughs> they have some good bottlings amongst their distillers but overall yeah see i'm not the only one that feels this way diageo if you're by chance listening um so please get your best people on brewer and port ellen get your people that want to make it right that aren't all about the money I know it's hard when you are looking, doing this for the money, but it's all about the art too. Have some balance, have some marketing thought in it, but don't lose the art. Don't lose the finesse. Don't lose the character. Don't lose what makes it special. This is why we go for these premium. Yes, Bora and Port Ellen are super, super premium whis whiskeys, but they, they better not Diageo it to death or I will be upset. <laughs> the Diageo special release is mostly very tasty bottles, but and the only thing wrong is the price. Even longer than twelve is getting pricey. Yeah, Fred's correct. The um, Lagavulin twelve is one of my favorite whiskeys. Now, even though I might not be the biggest Diageo fan per se, even though I love their brands like Guinness and Lagavulin, but Lagavulin as whiskey is is very well done. I love the twelve. I love the eight. I love the sixteen. I love the the nine, I love the freaking everything I've ever tasted by them. But, you know, that's one of those things that's hard to screw up, thankfully. <laughs> it's hard for Diageo to screw up Lagavulin, I think. I'm not sure why that is. I'm glad that they have a problem screwing it up. Uh, hopefully, Bora and Port Ellen are like that. Hopefully, when they get their hands on this stuff and they've had the, you know, 12, 15 years to put out a product, Hopefully they make sure it's well deserving of the Bora Port Ellen brand. Now that's the funny thing I hope that Diageo thinks about. See, Diageo is not a brand, even though everyone knows the name if they know whiskey slash uh, liqueur slash you know beverages in, in general. Everyone knows Diageo, yes, but it's not a brand. To me, a brand is Lagavulin 
or um, Port Ellen Abora, you know, that the distillery to me makes the difference. It doesn't matter if Diageo or whoever runs Dalmore is into it, El, uh, Tybev or uh, any of these um, owners, you know, it's all about the distillery. It's just you pray that the owner doesn't mess it up. So hopefully uh, it's hard for them to mess it up. Were they supreme before they closed? Pretty much, yeah. They were. They were always have been pretty super premium. I mean, they've always been the upper echelon. I think of you know the thing. Jason says no, or they wouldn't have closed. I mean, that's a good point. I always wondered what made them so special. Um, I guess their older stuff is premium. Maybe, maybe once they got to the '90s and the oats, that they didn't have a, a, a the, the juice to back up the character anymore. A lot of distilleries are like that. I've heard, you know, White Horse Lager of, of one is like the best stuff. The old White Horse label stuff. Never tried it. It's hard to believe it's better than the Lagavulin 16 that you normally can get that's great in itself, but it's possible. Um, Jason says that Port Ellen was blending stock uh, and was surplus to requirements. Uh, Bro was replaced by Clanley and drafted back into service in an emergency in Isla Drought, 90s. The 90s was a big problem, I think, too. Uh, the biggest problem for the new Bro, uh, Fred says, and Port Ellen is the bottles we rave about are 30 years old. Yeah, they have lots to live up to. New standard 10 or 12 might not be up to the task. And that's that's a fear I have. Is I know they're going to jump at the... I'd be surprised, be honest with you. I, I hope I'm wrong. But knowing how some of these operators are, Diageo, please don't try to release a three-year Port Ellen or Bora. It's just not worth it. I know that once it's three years old, you can sell it as a Scotch whiskey. But unless it is absolutely, positively, bar none, gorgeous, great tasting stuff, for God's sakes, don't try to release a three-year-old whiskey. Don't even try to release a five-year-old. If it's not at least eight years old, I don't want to even try it, I think, at this point. It's got to at least be eight years old, minimum. Um, preferably 12 to 15, 18 is, you know, of course, what we're shooting for here. But... Um, Unless this, you're going for some special peat, Brora is not a peated whiskey. Poor Ellen is, but they're basically Kalila. Um, unless you know you're you're using some ancient Kalila peat, it's going to be really hard to do much of anything with something young. I think at either one of these distilleries, um, the the poor Ellen might pass for a five to seven year, but. Yeah, we'll be all old men by the time I get to their 30-year-old stock, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I hopefully... Oh, it's Petier. Early Brewer. It's brought back online to make Petey Spirit after all. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, the, the, the thankfully the one I had was not Petey. Um, it was a 26-year-old Brewer from 1982. Two, I believe. I'm going by memory here, so I could be off. But man, that was the best tasting whiskey for being non peated that I've ever tasted. It was it was something else, man. Something else in its own. Didn't need peat for that to be outstanding. That's how good the sherry aspects of it were. Um, I'm trying to remember if it was Hogshead. I think it was a Hogshead deal. It might be why it was so damn good. 38 years from 77, man, whew, that would be glorious, I bet. How is it that when the 90s, when the economy was booming, people weren't drinking whiskey? I think it was a uh, unfortunate or fortunate, depending. I mean, I wish I was alive during the 90s. I would have been drinking whiskey. I mean, I wish I was a whiskey drinker in the 90s. I, I, I just graduated from high school in 94, so unfortunately... I, I was too poor to be a scotch drinker in 1994. But if I wasn't, if I had the money, I would have been all over it. I would have had the biggest time ever. But, yeah, it, whiskey was not in fashion in the 90s. It was vodka and gin and 
everything else wrong it's just like it's becoming now i'm hoping that the uh the, the 2020s is a whiskey downfall i hope that it crashes and that everybody goes to armagnacs and gins and all sorts of crazy stuff adult men were drinking everything but whiskey i think in the 90s even our big was dead in the 90s i mean that tells you it had been pretty bad um Hey, Russia's got a lot of people, man. <laughs> uh, Swedes love vodka too, man. Finns, Swedes. Hey, uh, Fred probably likes a little vodka every once in a while. Don't you, Fred? <laughs> oh, man. The beer wasn't big yet in the 90s. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't a, a crash thing. So I guess it was all... The gin and tonic and tangere and cognac, I guess, back then. That, that's what our, all the hip hop guys were, were boosting the tangere and the and the uh, cognacs and Hennessy and stuff, man. I mean, that that was, I think, what people were drinking. Yeah, it was still a local thing back then. So there you go. <laughs> Fred, was you a vodka drinker back in the nineties? I don't, I don't know how old you are, but. Uh, let us know what you were drinking. Jason was drinking uh, a craft beer at a local level. It looks like the '90s were a very different early, yeah, early days. Yes, no vodka for Fred, but gin and tonic on a hot summer day is great. Yeah, maybe it was the gin and the everything else but vodka. Gin and uh, was that? Do you remember the '90s, Fred? As far as like why people weren't drinking. Um, Whiskey back in the 90s? I'm curious, too. Other than just a fashion fad thing, I can't think of any reason why Ardbeg had to close in the 90s and all these distilleries had to, like, figure out something to do. Lost Claws, good to see you, man. When he wasn't yet his drinking age back then. Just wine in the 90s. Yeah, wine was a big thing back then. I do remember that. I was even into wine. And gin seems to be getting big right now, yeah. Didn't realize Boulevard was so old. Boulevard. I'm not sure. Is that like some sort of a – what's Boulevard DHS? Just curious. Liberty L was amazing from Jason. <laughs> I I was a beer slash wine drinker in the 90s pretty much, but only because of the price. I couldn't afford, uh, like I can now, some of these $100 bottles uh, of things. So, But if I was – Myself back in the 90s, I would have been at Ardbeg's door begging them not to close, probably. <laughs> I hope to God it doesn't get that bad again. I do want the whiskey prices to come down to a point, but I don't want distilleries to close. That's for damn sure. Excuse me. So sorry about that. Um, but I, I, I definitely uh, – oh, Fred was born in the mid-80s, only Pepsi's in the 90s. Oh, okay. Well, that explains it. You guys are youngins. <laughs> uh, I got 10 years on you there, Fred. I was born in 75. But uh, but still, even though I could uh, I could drink, I couldn't drink anything other than a Guinness or maybe uh, you know an Irish car bomb or something that had some... Uh, the drink of the 90s to me was that Jägermeister and stuff like that. So... That back then it was all about just getting smashed. It wasn't about what you were tasting. <laughs> if people stop drinking like they do now, hundreds of distillers are going to go close very quickly. That's true. That's true. Hopefully not the good ones, man. I wouldn't mind if a few of them closed that aren't so great, if you know what I mean. But the Ardbegs and the little Freugs, Lagavulin, I, I hope sticks around. Uh, Campbelltown stuff, hopefully it sticks around. Some of the space sides are good. Some of the low ones are even good, but a couple of them, I'm not going to cry if they close. <laughs> mm. It's hard to believe this is so good and neat. It really is. I think it's the age that makes it so tasty at a neat 56 point whatever level. All the American guys are going to be effed. <laughs> I don't see the tra trajectory turning downward anytime soon yeah i hope on one hand you're right because i don't want to see closures on the other hand though 
I hope that it, it evens out where these prices come a little bit more into, um, yeah, recession could definitely do it. But thankfully, I can't speak to other countries' uh, economies, but thankfully American economy is actually doing pretty well right now, uh, seems like. Um, I'm not going to get into politics, but at least I think uh, – okay, DHS says uh, he, he's just <laughs> new Gen Z people aren't into whiskey. Yeah, uh, uh, that's good for me, though, man. Yeah, more more good all for me. Started drinking whiskey in 2010. Ugadol was the one that got me. Glove Farkas 15 got me in the sherry. Yeah. If that's looking at dropping interest rates. Oh. See, I don't see. I think that's a Trump thing. Um, I think that all these real estate guys are freaking out about the interest rates. But when the interest rate rises, it's good for the economy. I can make money on my money. My savings account can make money. My money market account can make money. I want to make money. So I want the interest rates to go up for God's sakes. And I think Trump is the only reason why he's all been out of shape on these interest rates because it's real estate. But we'll see. He, 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 the funny thing is, on a great economy, you can't drop the interest rate because it doesn't make sense. You have to, to make it go up. And, and that's the thing. Yeah, if he wants... A great economy, he can have it, but he can't have a great economy, and and think that the interest rate is going to. Yeah, I mean, he he might have zero impact on it, but as a real estate mogul, he wants the interest rate to go down. He doesn't want it to go up. I want it to go up because I want to make money on my money. So it's like he just needs to reinvest. If 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 he if he loses all you know in real estate. But if he has enough, maybe he doesn't have enough capital. I don't know. But if he has enough money to, to you know, invest, you can make a boatload of money on interest rates going up. I don't see what the big deal there is. But I don't want to get into politics. This could, this could go, this could go uh, messy. I'm saying that the Fed chairman is about to drop rates because the Fed is trying to prevent a pending recession. Hmm. It's it is possible. I, I hope that. I'll, I'm not saying you're wrong. I hope that you're wrong because I don't want the interest rate to be dropped. It doesn't make sense because I thought that if your economy is doing well, your interest rates have to go up. But I, I could be wrong with that. I don't know. But if I can find a way to make money from the money I've got in savings, that's what it's about. And that's what I'm looking forward to. It can't happen if the interest rate doesn't go up and if it goes down. So we'll see what happens. Um, it'll be interesting. Um, anyway, the market has fully priced, uh, and 0.25% drop in interest rate coming here. Oh, that sucks, man. I hope that there's no in recession on the horizon because it's going to kill him in 2020 and it's going to, it's going to kill everything. He better pray that the market's hold up until 2020 is all I can say. Cause if interest rates start dropping, and if if the economy is not highly affected by inflation, yeah, that sucks, man. I hope to God that uh, that it doesn't do that. But you can, I, I, I don't I don't know enough, enough, eh, I don't know enough about the um, economics to know what is going to affect inflation that much right now. Yeah, tariffs are going to be tough, but I don't know, man. It, it's, it's hard. I mean, I, I could see both sides of this. It's like I would much prefer buying – I don't mind paying a slight premium on a product if it's made in America because I know it's well built. I wish other people had that mentality. The problem is most people just want the cheapest product, and they'll buy it from China even if it's 10 times less effective. It's sad. Corporate treasury professional working in one. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> you, you, I, I definitely, de I'll, I'll definitely defer to DHS on that on this deal. Uh, ho hopefully, it gets better. <laughs> I try to source as much as my synth business in the US as I can. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I would pay the premium for an American product. I just wish other people would be ready to do the same because why buy three or four products 
when you can just buy one American one, it lasts you 20 years. Why buy three or four uh, China versions for 20 years if you have to buy four of them? It doesn't make sense to me, but. DHS says, uh, I'm sorry, Whiskey Jesus. Yeah, I hope these. And I hope not just the U.S. For view of the world. Yeah, no, I hear you there. I had to go to China for PCP work recently, though. I had to turn down a better product at a fifth of the cost. Yeah. It's hard to turn down a product, better product at a fifth of the cost. I, I hear you there. Like, I, to me, if it is a better product, I would go with the American one. But if China comes up with a better product for a fifth of the cost, yes, I would definitely buy the, the Chinese version. It's just, is it actually... The quality is it there? That's 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 what I'm looking for, and that's for any kind of product. Doesn't matter if it's a widget, a fidget, a bidget, whatever it is. You know, DHS not trying to discuss politics. The economy is showing lots of signs of recession coming. The U.S. is showing less signs than Europe, which is worse off. Oh, controllers in 15 countries every month on this topic. Wow, the worst is when China is ripping off something. Yeah. Usually it's due to stolen R and D. Yeah, that's that's a big problem too. Not get me started on that, but yeah, the Chinese love to um, what's the word for it without being derogatory. Um, they like to uh, do things the easy way. <laughs> so you got to be careful when it comes to that stuff. But yeah, but hopefully, if there is a recession, as DHS is talking about. Hopefully it's at a very minimal level, man, where we bounce back quick because uh, Brexit is not good for the world economy, but good, good, good deals on scotch. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. With, with the whole Brexit thing, like, it, it's, it's tough. I can see why Britain is wanting to, like, separate themselves when it comes to that. Yeah, the scotch tariffs would be off the chain. <laughs> I'm not sure what OFC is, but I'm thinking it's off the chain. <laughs> but who knows with this guy? Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that uh, they can separate themselves without this being a trade issue. Um, I, I mean, no offense, guys, but when I go to, to Norway, I want to speak Norwegian. I want to experience Norwegian culture. I don't want a watered down version if that if that's what the EU is going to be no offense to the United States but you know Europe is a different thing when it comes to globalization to me I I don't want like everything to be watered down and and homogenized you know grouped together and clustered in, in a way where it's it loses its appeal to me. I, I, I hope that it doesn't go that way. On, on the other hand, though, yeah, I mean, trade is going to be a pain to deal with if they're not in the EU. So it's going to be kind of crazy. But oh, of course, I got you. But not like it's uh, tabled as the last salvo in the trade war. Yeah, it's. It's a tough one. Let's let's talk about something a little less less uh, less unnerving. <laughs> let's get back to something cheery, because <laughs> man, trade wars are. I mean, on one hand, it's like I'm sick of the U.S. being the the walking mat when it comes to a lot of these trade deals. On one hand, on the other hand, it's like, <sighs> yeah, London is the banking capital of the world. Good point. So yeah, for them to get, I, I guess if 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 they're going to stick with this EU mentality, I think I guess Germany is going to have to step up and be the next London, Berlin, or whatever city makes sense if they can do it. But uh, I don't know. Maybe with London, with the uh, United Kingdom separating themselves, maybe you'll see someone else. Uh, I'm not sure if Germany would do it, but. Oh, and Norway's not even part of the EU. They voted no back in the 90s. So, yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> That's just me. But, 
but it would be horrible for the UK's economy. Yeah, I guess if they weren't as a focal point in the banking industry, <sighs> it's it's going to be interesting to see how this this rise. I guess that's why Theresa May has such a such a real tough deal with getting everyone to uh, find a way to make this work. I can see the reason. I agree with the reasonings for Brexit. It's just that, yeah, I mean, there's so much going on that makes it complicated that doing this, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world and not have it affect a lot of different things. So I don't know, hopefully they can figure it out uh, without being you know, too disruptive to the whole world. If there is disruption, hopefully it's minimal. But man, yeah, with, with the U, with, with UK being such a, a huge part, hopefully they can find a way to do this, do the Brexit, still have a, enough going on where it's not such a horrible deal for them, and Germany step up for the EU, and and I don't know. It's a, that's a tough one. But anyway, back to some whiskey. <laughs> Man, it's still going strong, still no complaints. Um, I could sip this definitely all day long and never have an issue or I need to go anywhere else, really. And that's so surprising of a Lowland. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, what's the cheapest NCA, NCF? That's no color added, no chill filter, cast strength Talisker. Been wanting to try one. Hmm. No color added, no chill filter, cast strength Talisker. Jeez, man, you don't ask for much, do you there, Las Claus? <laughs> cast strength, man. Uh, I don't have one here. I've got the 18, the 10, and the Distiller's Edition bottles. I need um, that eight cast strength. I know that eight cast strength is uh, is uh, a good one. Never seen an independent Talisker. Oh yeah, old particular. That's the one I had. I had an old particular Talisker eight, which was really good. I think it was cast strength. I'm going by memory though. It's been a while. I thought it was. Uh, you know, reasonable. I don't think it was very expensive. So look for an old particular Talisker 8 uh, that might be a good option. Douglas Lang had bottled some very young Taliskers in the province range. Okay. There's a good uh, tip from uh, Fred there. I have heard of the Providence uh, Douglas Lane stuff being very good. Um, the 8 cast strength is all I know about. Not sure if it's colored or not. Yeah, that, that I don't know as well. Um, let's see if we can do a quick look. And I can tell you probably. Distiller. Let's see. Distiller.com probably would have some information on the coloring, chill filtering of that particular one. Let's see, Talisker. I'm tapping with one hand here because my keyboard's all tilted. Because of the construction, so sorry about that. But uh, yeah, the eight-year special release was fifty-nine point four. First fill X bourbon, great reviews. Uh, available beginning of September twenty eighteen. Limited quantities, though. Uh, I would go for the eight uh, distillery cast strength version if you can find it. Now, if you can't find that particular version, let me see if uh, if they have the eight-year uh, also on the uh, independent side. One second. Uh, 85 Maritime Edition. Oh, wow. That would be something else. Um, Disclosure exclusive bottlings. 18 is Point Port Re, the Select Reserve, 25 Storm Tenure. They don't really have any independence on here, but if you can find the old particular uh, 
Yeah, Douglas Slang. If you could find that one, it's an eight-year cast strength. I think that would be uh, also a good chance. Yeah, so go with the distillery first. If you can find the eight-year, awesome. If you can't, look for Douglas Slang slash Old Particular eight-year. Also, cast strength, also tasty. I've had it myself. I have not had the distillery version, but I've heard great things about it. It rates very well across the board uh, for the eight-year uh, cast strength. Looks like it averages a 4.5 out of 5 out of 10 votes. So that should tell you something. Smoked bacon with a peppery taste kind of thing. Typical island, you know, uh, Goody, goodness. Nutella was the, a very uh, forward note on it. Chocolate, hazelnut kind of thing. If you like that, go for the uh, the Talisker 8 uh, distillery version. I did not get the Nutella thing on mine. I Mine was like a, a real vibrant version of the Talisker 10, which I like. That's what the old particular version was. This the story sounds like it's a, like a, got a lot of uh, chocolate hazelnut, uh, smooth for a cast strength. Um, so I think that you'd uh, be happy with uh, happy with that overall. I'd be surprised if you weren't. Well, it's six o'clock here, guys. I gotta get some dinner. Wow, time has flown by. Uh, I really appreciate you all hanging out. We've talked about everything pretty much under the sun. And I'm still sipping some uh, good stuff here, and we'll tap into that Glen Turret uh, bottle SMWS uh, next show uh, Tuesday, definitely. If not before that, I'll just set up the same thing where I tilt the camera this way, and that way you don't have to look at all the uh, nasty construction back there. Uh, you can't see the bottles, but they're way back there in the back. My microphone's kind of in the way, but there's there's definitely a uh, Drink is still going on. Salon Java, and see you guys in the next one. Uh, take a look at Whiskey Jason's uh, channel. Also, take a look at Dapper Drams if you have a champ, the chance. That's my friend Paul, and uh, he's a little, little crazy, funny, but he, he definitely has a nose and a palate. So there you go. And uh, see you later from now, Fred. I forgot how you say goodbye uh, in Norsk. Oh, man. How do you say it again? Damn. I'm trying to remember. I've lost it all. <laughs> Type it out for me, Fred. Close it out with some uh, goodbye in Norwegian. As soon as I see it, I'll probably be like, oh, that's right. Oh, uh, man. Hada bra. Yeah. Is it Hada bra? Hada bra? Am I pronouncing it correctly? <laughs> yeah, thanks, Last Cause, Jason, uh, Donner, DHS, Fred, everybody that came out, Whiskey Jason. I hope that's close enough pronunciation. Oh, well. <laughs> well, how to brought for now, Fred. Hope to see you again next stream, and uh, hope you drink something that's uh, pleasant. All right, and uh, hopefully the um, the prices do not go up; they only go down. That's my new tag. <laughs> See. You.